Wonder Twins live, mate. Ready to activate, man. It's your host with the most cool out of smoke, yuck mouth in the house, mate. With my twin. Hey, hey, Gooch the Great, the best thing to happen to a woman since the straight and calm. And we are the Wonder Twins. Let me see. Ah, oh, because I got these shades on, everything look like dark. Okay, I'm on. Uh, man, nigga, we just talked about this dope ass interview that yeah. Cat Williams just had on um Club Shay Shay. Man, shout out Shannon Sharp, man. This whole platform, y'all go follow that. I yes, think sir. City in the city, man. Uh, I think one of the dopest interviews that Cat Williams ever did. Uh, right. One of the dopest interviews. One of the dopest guests that uh Shannon Sharp has ever had. Right. We um raised a lot of eyebrows in that interview, my nigga. Like a lot of people yeah. got threw under the bus. A lot of people got, you know, he responded to a lot of hate, basically. Right. I mean, a lot of people yeah. that try to blackball him or whatnot. So before we get into this dialogue, man, we definitely gonna talk to the people in the building, man. So we're gonna put No, before on. we get into dialogue, we gotta activate. activate. <laughs> activate. <laughs> One of the twins. Yeah. Activate. Da -da -da. <laughs> well, your drink make you start speaking the Spanish, nigga. Yes, sir. I gotta come back and talk some shit on what the fuck weekly about Gilbert Arenas. I just found out some shit about him. Okay, so who was the first tap in? It's gonna be a special what the fuck weekly, but he he gonna have to respond to this one, man, because this this is dirty work, my nigga. Oh, you going all the way in tonight? This is a room I heard about the nigga. It's crazy, okay. though. But that nigga that had the money he had, he should never have done what I've heard. Okay. So, we don't okay. some shit, man. And so, you then, working double time tonight, huh? And now, nah, Gilla pull up on the nigga. Gilla hit the link, nigga. Like, nigga, who, what you talking about, nigga? Hey, what, hey, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. I did do that, nigga. You know, yeah. <laughs> Gil with all this shit, man. So okay, okay. Fuck weekly and get Gil up in this motherfucker. As soon as you see it, he gonna respond. You know. Um, uh, who was uh? Who was our first tap in? Got boy right here. That's the rare oracle. The rare oracle. That's B. What's got going on? What's going on? Man, but we got everybody in this motherfucker. Main American, uh, Negro nigga, and boom nigga. Bay boy in this bit, but well, let's do the motherfucking uh, tap in though. Jay let's Dirk do it. Tapping in from West Oakland, you feel me? Good. Let's do it. Tapping in from the motherfucking uh, 206. I see you, boy. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yep, I see niggas. Uh, nigga, Faye Fafiet. Nigga, whatever that shit is, Arkansas in the building. <laughs> <laughs> Down under Adelaide in the building, man. Salute to my Adelaide mates. You dig? Ain't it, man? Uh, yeah, I didn't know what the fuck that name was. Deep East Oakland and this motherfucker to uh Arkansas, man. That's good money, mate. That's good motherfucking money, man. Yeah, everybody yes, tapped in. We got the gang in this motherfucker, man. I see your boy Crenshaw on this bitch. Crenshaw District 415. Okay, the city getting litty. I see your boy. Um Washington this motherfucker nigga said Yaki Mike. Yaki Washington, nigga. Wherever the fuck that is. Yaki Ma, nigga. <laughs> this is okay. Saudi Arabia. Nigga said he tapping in from Saudi Arabia. Okay, my nigga. Okay. My nigga's out there in the, in the uh, what's it called? The Emirates? The Emirates? Yeah. Yeah. My nigga's out there with them Emirates money. You feel me? Getting it in. I need to get my thing together too, fella. But, uh. Yeah. This is, uh. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're talking about tonight is um is amazing how this might be the interview of the year on the third day of the of the year. Of the year. This nigga done stirred up so much controversy, nigga. Yeah. So much drama, nigga. Like you got I got niggas with sponsors and everything, nigga. Okay. I gotta go get one more. I gotta research one more day. Okay, I'll talk to him while you do your thing. Okay. I'll hold it down. I'm gonna give you the screen. Talk your shit. Okay. Take that thing off the screen. All right. So tonight, ladies um, and gentlemen, um, shit, uh, it's it has two point five million views in like five hours, six hours. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people have seen it already. Cat Williams did an interview with Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay, and it's um very shocking interview. 
Um, the reasoning Yuck and Yuck, Yuck and I wanted to get on it immediately it wasn't so much for the numbers and stuff like that. We know these people in, you know, in which you're being talked about. So we know all these people. Um, it's not like we're about to recap things. It's not like uh, how some people talk trash about other people and they don't know who they are at all. These are people we actually know. So it touched home and uh, we're going to get into it and we're going to give you, you know, insight from the industry side of it, not a person who wanted to be a star one day or whatever. We're going to talk to people who actually hang out with these people and rub shoulders with these people. So it's going to be deep, man. We're going to wait for you up. In the meantime, if y'all have another drink, have a drink. I'm back, Jack. Okay. Let's get it, man. Uh, so let's get straight to the meat and potatoes. Oh, I got to say, what's up to my sis, man? My sis is out here. What's up? What's up, Trees? Jean, so I'm going to toast for her, and let's get into it. Hey, salute the Trees, man. Y'all know what I mean? One of the twins activate. I do a toast for her, too, my nigga. Okay, let's do it. Bye. There we go. There we go. Yes, sir. Good yes, sir. I'm good money at Sunday. You hear me? Yes, sir. Cool. We on. Okay. I'm lit up now. I'm lit in the city. Lit, lit in the city. And it's my camera. I think my camera kind of blue. Oh, yeah. That's way better. Okay. Oh, that's way better, man. Look how that fool bopped it up. Yeah. Oh, that's way better, fella. We back, Jack. But uh, yeah, it. let's get to this dialogue, man. Let's get straight to the mean potatoes, man. This boy goes in. I'm gonna I'm gonna let him speak, man. Fair use, yeah. fair use. Fair use. Um we ain't gonna, it's a long ass interview, so we're gonna go straight to the mean potatoes, man. He calls out Steve Harvey, everybody on this little what is Steve Harvey, nigga, Kevin Hart, Cedric, the entertainer, nigga. He has no chill, nigga. None. He's on one on this one, nigga. Like, he so. gave a shout out to Mac Minister, though. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Mac Minister. He, and I want them to go, go deep more into that, but he just shouted him out one time. But long as he gave Mac Minister his props, nigga, that's all I yeah. know. That's let's exactly do it. That's exactly what the nigga reminded me of, Mac Minister. But let's go. Fair use. Let's do it. I needed you to know why I came by. Yeah, I need you to tell us why. People know I don't go everywhere. I'm not interested in talking to people unless it's like a Larry King or somebody of an amazing ilk that I would actually want to go talk to in real life. Okay. Um, I don't do it so I can sell product and I got things to sell, so let me come talk. Um, you have a great product here, and as a fan base, we love the attention that you spend on the guests. We, we love how much work you've done, how well you know them, how prepared you are. The same things that we liked about you in football. <laughs> you brought that on over to here. And that's uh, why it resonates. And the reason I had to come is because you've made a safe place for the truth to be told. You know what I mean? Thank you. I appreciate and that. I have watched all of these lowbrow comedians come here and disrespect you in your face <laughs> and tell you straight up lies. <laughs> I'm talking about things that have never been heard in all of black Hollywood. They feel comfortable sitting here and lying to you about it. You gonna set the record straight? Are you kidding me? You let Ricky Smiley sit here and you said out that mouth, you stole Friday after next. The one I was in, <laughs> I wish all, all of America fumbled a bit when that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You ain't say nothing. But this man told you he had Cat Williams' role. He was gonna be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Williams, was gonna be fr was gonna be the Santa Claus. Now let's three quick points. Three quick. You mean in Hollywood they cast a five foot five black Santa Claus that weigh 145 pounds? That's your story. Your story is the Ricky Smiley that couldn't even do curse words because he had a Christian fan base. He was gonna play the pimp. Why you didn't ask him? Why has he played a woman in more movies than he's played a man? 
Well, I didn't know he. You could. shouldn't be able. You wouldn't let a, 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 a athlete that been on steroids talk about one of the greats. <laughs> Ricky Smiley can't act because Ricky Smiley can't act. He told you the story about when the movie came out. Where did he say he watched it? At home. He wasn't even at the premiere. You telling this man you stole that. Oh, so he could get his name in the same sentence with a great one. It is sad. He was just that bitter when we were shooting it. He told everybody it should have been my role. Everybody on the scene. Why do you think no cast member has ever said anything? He couldn't have played that role like you. I thought he, he Sir, was. Sir, no one. Why no? He was with KD. He beat up Terry Crews. Why nobody know this story? You talking about in Hollywood, they switched off roles. You take this and he. What? Hi, I'm Zoe Gong. As a traditional. Fair Chinese use, fair Chinese use, y'all. Fair service, use. I love using Squarespace to share my Fair message. use. All right, you know this nigga monetized. <laughs> oh, yeah, come on, like a motherfucker, let's go. So Let's Ricky, go. Ricky Smiley knows this. It's because, well, why would he lie? I don't know why liars lie, but I can tell you this. We auditioned in Los Angeles. Yes. I was audition number 201. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike with me. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? The truth of the matter is the money Mike in the original script got raped oh. in the bathroom. And that's what Ricky Smiley was OK with. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we talking about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy, right? where I have all the credibility and all the pull. The problem with oh. Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. Yeah. And this comedy involves a rape. And Yep, I just paused it. Talk your shit. Do me a favor. Hold it down real quick. I'm about to send phase on the link. I'll be right back. All right. And, and we shall continue with the motherfucking network and with the motherfucking uh, content, baby. Cat Williams is basically saying that he is not with none of the Fin Flam, Peter Pan, motherfucking, uh, uh, what the shit called, Tinkerbell ass shit, bruh, period. Give me a real male role. I'm not getting raped in this motherfucking role. We're taking that out the script, period. Oh, I'm not doing this shit. Uh. So, Cat said he got them to take that shit out the strip, which is some real man shit. You feel me? Stand on business type of shit, man. So we got to respect Cat Williams, man. And he's speaking the truth. He tell you what the elite niggas do and what these sucker niggas do to get in position, man. So listen to a motherfucker like him, man. Like he, he a Kanye. He, he's another Kanye that, that's exposing the game, exposing the elites, exposing the, the, the treacherous shit that goes down and this shit behind closed doors. How, how, what it takes for a motherfucker to win in this shit. So let's take, hey, man, he talking this shit, man. Cat Williams, talk your shit, nigga. Let's go. Yada da. Fair use. Rape is never funny, no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny as it would be with him getting raped. So considering that's the real story, why would you bring up that story? 35 members of the cast and crew have never brought up that Ricky Smiley was gonna play Money Mike. No one ever saw me put on a Santa Claus suit. We got a wardrobe department. They made a Santa Claus suit for me. Why that wasn't in the bloopers? Why? And, and here's the other thing. Everything that Money Mike said, Cat Williams wrote. So what Ricky Smiley say on his? You can't say my lines, I wrote them. That's how I already know that I'm going to be funnier than you. What he told everybody was, Cat Williams, hey, hey, don't nobody know who he is? I'm on the radio. I'm with Steven Said. Everybody know me. That's what he told everybody that would listen to on the set. 
That's the truth of the matter. He was so egregious, not now, then. He was so egregious that, and Hollywood has never heard this in a hundred years. He was so egregious, I put in my contract that I won't work with Ricky Smiley again unless he's in a dress. Now, what was Ricky Smiley's next movie? Was it First Sunday? Did he wear a dress in it? You bet he did. It's in my contract. Wow. Why would you put that in your, put his, in your contract, Cap? Wow. That's where he's the, a believable actor. Him and Tyler Perry can't play a man to save their life. They play oh, good cool. women. And I believe that the best actor should be in the best role. So that's why, because when we released that clip and he said that, you respond. God damn, man. We got to take a breather on that one, man. No Frank Ocean, but God hey, damn. Man. Hey. Hold up, big swole up. Did the nigga hey. say they play the best roles dress up in a dress, my nigga? Like, what are we doing? Yeah. Hey, he Say got that. the gloves off. He's saying names. See, this is what I wanted Kanye to do. Say names and dates. Like, fuck saying a whole religion or a whole race. Say the names what? and dates, my nigga. So this last Kanye rant that he did, he really starts saying some names. I call the niggas out who you got a problem with, man. You feel yeah. me? Frankly, you know what I mean? So I like how Cat is handling his business because he's talking directly to the people we got a problem with. He ain't saying all comedians. He ain't making a, well, all comedians did this. No, nigga. You, 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 and you, and you, nigga. You yeah. cool, but fuck you. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, talk your shit, Cat. Fair how use, fair use. How you feel about him, like, standing on business about the dress thing about him Friday? You know, I mean, not the, not, um, not the dress thing, but uh, standing on business about him not being raped as Money Mike and Friday. I think Cat is one of the few black men in the industry that feel that knows that he has a responsibility for young men watching him. Whatever. Um, that isn't something that you should promote. That isn't something that um, it's been seen already. I mean, it's not funny anymore. Let's make something else funny. If you're a creative person you can do something else about putting on a dress. That's Flip Wilson did it. Um, no, that's, let's do something else with it. So I, I, he stood on business and you have to applaud him for that one. And then there's no disrespect to the church, but being a pimp and wearing that hair he wore, that was damn near the most feminine, masculine shit that a pimp nigga did back in the day was not getting raped by no no niggas and no shit like that. They had a, a, a hairdo that probably a woman would have sometimes. That's right. it. And for him to wear that long ass perm and did that, that was that was enough, my nigga. But right. that's, that's what the pimps wore back in the day. But that's the only thing that you can say that a pimp got on that a female could have. Nigga, a pimp hair longer than a bitch hair sometimes. Pimp yeah. hair been like bitch did. My hair long and strong. Bitch, what, what, what's happening? You yeah. got a wig on. So yeah, yeah, that type of shit. So at least he he, he stuck to the motherfucking uh craft because he said right. he was crazy. You know what I mean? Like grew up, not grew up, but spent some time around some madams and some. You know what I mean? Some people that ran. Yeah. Some he grew up around the ism. He grew up around he the ism. Around all ism, man. So he, he he brought that character to life, my nigga. Let's get it. Fair use. Let's do it. Funded because he said he was supposed to play Money Mike and you were supposed to say play Santa Claus. An outright lie. So that he knows is a lie. So why would he say it? Because he's a liar. Nobody knows why liars lie. And that's why I had to come on the program. Cedric did the same thing. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat Williams joke? Yeah. He said it don't line up. How it don't line up that I did it on TV in 2018. You came to see me at the comedy store do it in 2019 and then did it on the Kings of Comedy. Like what doesn't line up? I This is a televised joke that Mark Curry helped me punch up and get to the level that it was. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he, and then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. And it's a man unit. Then you ask it, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. 
I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asks for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good old baby and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. You would have to have a range. I played <laughs> a lot of characters, 60 movie roles. I'm not playing Cat Williams in there. I don't know. I don't know, Cat. We might not let you drink anymore the way you, you, I mean, we ain't even got. I'm not fueled by alcohol. I've had a sip less than you. Fair use, fair use, you guys. Fair use. Consider that New Year's resolution. Very monetized. Yet to be back in a second to change it. Yep, we'll be back in a second to change it. And therapy can help with that. As a therapist, I see the same pattern happening again and again at the same time every year. January rolls around. Bitch, fuck you, bitch. Hey, they doing what we do, man. Hey, salute, man. That motherfucking activate. Them niggas is... Yeah, they're activating activate. on us. They're activating. They activated with us, man. Everybody out there, this is a perfect time, perfect still shot for everybody to activate. If you're just now getting in the motherfucking house, we are the motherfucking Wonder Twins, baby. And hey, I got my activation ready to go, too, man. Let's do like the Good Wonder boy. Twins. Let's do like Shannon Sharp. Let's do like Cat. Yeah. Let's activate. We activate, baby. Yada da. You seen uh face on that linky? He's in there? No, I said, did you send him the link? Yeah, I sent it to him, yeah. Okay, we wait for phase on then. Okay, talk. Yeah, let's let's hear what he gotta say. Oh, well, let's Fair do it. Use. Fair, Fair use, use uh, definitely, man. Shout out to uh Shay, uh what uh Shay, what's called Club Shay, man. So Go to Club Shay, follow him, you know what I mean, on, on the tube, man, the livest motherfucking sports uh, podcast out there, man, Club Shay Shay, man, y'all fuck with it, man, fair use, let's go. The truth don't need motivation. I'm just saying I can't let these dudes lie. Cedric's sitting here telling you why he ain't a movie star. He over here look like a walrus. You didn't say nothing. He can't even get his arms off his stomach sitting over here. Why I'm not a movie star. What? It's a situation. He never wrote anything. Remember, when Cedric the Entertainer starts, he's supposed to be singing, dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called the Entertainer. Right. We found out he can't sing, can't dance, and doesn't he's write doing jokes. An album. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Can I say that again for the audience? They're Ouch. so bad that they're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Ouch. You don't think Sam's a good, a, a good comedian? The world doesn't think that, sir. I have 12 comedy specials. He has four specials that are not available on Netflix or Tubi. Ouch. It seems to me, Kat, that you had a lot to get off your chest. No, no. You wanted to say the record straight. Winners are not allowed to allow losers to rewrite history. I don't say any of these things if my name is not breached by these people on your platform. They, if you give them a liar a platform to lie, then I, I'm not being messy by saying, hold on. That never happened. It's untrue. And there are hundreds of witnesses for each thing I'm saying. So let me ask you this. What is your relationship with Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley, and Cedric the Entertainer as you sit here currently? They, for 30 years, they're a group. These aren't three random guys. The way that Ricky Smiley kept appearing at all of my auditions is because of Steven said he would tell anybody that, listen, they got a gang on that side. They know what it is. They know who the gang is. Why Earthquake not in movies? Because he's illiterate. He can't read. And they found that out when they gave him a show and put the cards in front of him. Like all of these dudes are co-entwined and they share secrets. And this is the age of truth. And, and, and the truth doesn't need to be scared of the fact that people tell lies. Uh, cats on drugs. Hold on. God damn, man. Did the nigga just say earthquake can't read? God damn. Ouch. Come on, man. You ain't supposed to just put a nigga business out there like that, my nigga. Lord. You know what I mean? Rappers that, who can't read? <laughs> Do we put their business out there like that, my nigga? <laughs> well, you know what? It, it's uh, I, What Cat is doing 
he's adapting to today's times. He knows that it's more than likely none of these niggas going to do anything about it. Um, yeah, so this isn't the 90s, dog. This isn't when, when you said something about somebody. Nigga, you better be about that life. Right. You know what I mean? So uh, I don't – he didn't have to say him, though, because it's not like – I can see him going at Ricky Smiley and we people know, who said something know, about him. We know singers that can't say. I mean, read. We fuck it, We seen the Fantasia shit. So come on. Yeah, man. R. Kelly. R. Kelly. Like, come on, nigga can't read his own contracts. Like, it's all, all yeah. type of stuff. But so, if a you know what? Let me read. say this, Jack. So I want to say Mayweather. They said if Mayweather could read. They said no. I don't need to read. I know how to count money, nigga. <laughs> Listen to this. Yeah, and it takes. You know what? It takes a man to do what I'm about to do. I'm a functional illiterate. I don't read that well. And we all don't read read that well, nigga. Period. Yeah. So yeah. So you know, I watch YouTube three times a week, and I'm still teaching myself how to read. Do I speak a good conversation? Yeah, I had to. I know how to read. Um, yeah, but you know, so hey, you know, it is what it is. I'm not. You know? I'm, I'm a good silent reader. I'm a. I'm not a good out loud reader. Like I'm good, like right. silent reading, but out loud is my, my uh, vision. You know what I mean? I'm far. I'm not near sighted. I'm far sighted. So if they could put right. the motherfucking words hella big, then I could speed read. But with the words so little, nigga, I gotta focus in and zoom in. Like, right. a lot. but if they have big right. ass words, like nigga, I, you know what I mean? If you if you were to hear me read, you would think somebody was holding a gun to my head. <laughs> Thing, I'm gonna tell you. Um, I'm gonna tell you what, what some shit that's gonna have you reading like a motherfucker, man. It's, it's two books that that's good, that's good reading. That that shit that your nigga got, Monster Kobe. Have you read that Kobe. book, Monster Cody? No, I haven't read it. Read that fucking book. It's so easy. I'm talking about. He talking like my nigga on the block. It's nigga pure slang words and cuss words. You gonna man that? You gonna read through that motherfucker like in about. Three or four hours easily. But no more than five hours. Once you read that motherfucker, you will get you know how to just read all the books. But that's the that's the starter kit for just reading books. It got gangster shit to speak our language and straight to the point. And you can read that whole shit without seeing a word and getting confused. Once you read oh. that bitch, boom, go to the Bible. The Bible is next. Then you know what I mean? Go to 50 laws of power. Or, I mean 48 laws of power. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, you know what I mean? Shit that could, that could up your game, you know what I mean? And you're going to be entranced in, in, in a story, entranced in a game so much that you're just going to keep on reading the shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Period. So you got to have that literature that, that make a motherfucker want to be in tune like it's a movie. You know what I mean? Right. But, you know, it's you know it's like that took that kind of took like a chip off my shoulder because, I mean, if you listen to me speak, you probably wouldn't think it. But once again, it's like when a person – is blind, they smell better, they hear better. Right. So, once, you know, once you have, you're weak in one situation, you're strong in another. You know, I have a great conversation. You know what I mean? I could sell a bottle of water to a person drowning, but I had to have it. You're, you're a great musician, nigga. Yeah, yeah, you know, so, but once again, you know, when the teacher would say, hey, Lamont, come read in front of the class, I had to have a personality to take her mind off me reading and the class, you know, at the same time, you know, so, you know, this, but I feel good now. Like that, that chip is gone. Y'all know now, and it is what it is. So, hey, so it. whenever we get our, when we get our motherfucking sponsorships, I'm reading all the sponsorships. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> go ahead. It's all good. Man. There you, let's go. There you, but hold on. Lisa Jackson and tapped in. I want to tap in. Uh, 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 oh boy, Faison, before we tap in any guests. You know what I mean? So Lisa, we're going to let you tap in. Can right you quick. see Lisa Jackson? Can you see her? Yep. Cause it, okay, because I, oh, hold on. Let me, um, you know what? Bring her in for a second. Now let's hear what you got to say. Then we're going to, we got in and out. Yeah. Lisa, what's happening with it? Hey guys, how are you? Happy New Year. Yada da. Happy New Year's. Hey, 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 hey. All I want to say is that, you know, everything that you guys are saying is true. And at the end of the day, you know what? If you couldn't read that well or whatever, I see two guys that made the most money 
that I could have ever made in my <laughs> life. And if both of y'all are sitting up here saying that, you know, I might not have read that well, I might not have did this. You read that well. <laughs> salute to you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Salute. Seriously, I'm, salute. Right. I'm gonna leave. This. I'm, 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 um, I'm gonna listen. And at the end of the day, you know something. I'm starting to see this stuff is, um, this stuff is starting to. There's some things that's being revealing, and I have to say this to you guys, both of you. The earth is, um, or nature, or and if we want to call it the most high God or whatever, whatever we want to call it, it's being revealing. There are some things that's going on in them places and them spaces that y'all have been in that is not really good. You know, it's doing a lot of things. So, you know, gentlemen, you know, I will say this. If, if y'all got out and all y'all could do is, you know what I'm saying, just have concerts and do whatever you do, go home to your woman, go home, just go home. Cause this thing seems nasty. Hey, I'm 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 content Absolutely. with my success. I don't want <laughs> I don't want the next level. If it, the next level, I, I get that, and I'm saying, yeah, I'm getting off. I'm getting off, and you can say what you want to say, but I'm just saying, like, I, I, you know, this is really sad, and it's really sad to the black community. It, it's freaking sad. I'm not well, saying these cast things going on. Even. It's not just the black community. You see the white. No, I'm saying I'm talking about our community. community. The white artists, like <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not losing that, sir. I, what I'm trying to say is that I'm talking about our community because it's about time we start talking about our community and what goes on in that um that um cans and couch and. And them, them, them sorts of them parties and ah uh, no. That's what we. That's what we're talking about on the fifty one fifty show. It's a casting couch for niggas too, not only females. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. So it's you know what I'm saying it's not just that. So I will salute you guys and and thank you for thank having you. me. Anyway, I'm Hello. out. Happy New Year. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Hey man, good dialogue, man. At the end of the day, man, it's some treacherous shit. I always thought it was fake, Gooch. On some real shit, me being, you know, a a a, a, a guy fearing man, you know, mm -hmm. I never believe in, you know, the other dude. I know he exists, but I never believe that it's some like council or motherfuckers that do demonic shit, rituals and shit, and all these type of whatever sacrifices right. and all the extra shit. But when you start adding shit up, when you talk about the Bohemian Grove, where, where all the presidential people meet up in the Bay Area once a year. Okay like all the presidents ever and all the government officials and all the Illuminati, all the big wigs that got the money, the billionaires, they all meet up once a year in the Bay no. Area. When you see shit like that, you know it's real. It's it's something, it gotta be some type of truth to it. It got yeah. to And I was a yeah. nigga in denial, but once you hear these these musicians and these actors and comedians and, and, and shit, even athletes come out, it's like, yo, something is going on, man. Cause these motherfuckers see like they've been violated to the nigga beyond violated. Nigga, they crying and shit. Like the nigga for your nigga, well, the, not your nigga, but the nigga you brought to the table with the with the whole shit when he said he was being um was at the party and fell asleep at the nigga crib and was touched on when he was awakened. That type yeah. of shit. You know what I mean? Like that shit goes down. And I was a pure denial of this shit. Like, nah, hell no. I'm an Oakland nigga. I ain't we don't see that shit in Oakland. Sorry. Right. Sorry about that. Yeah, and, and L, the niggas I hang around in LA is real niggas. They don't rock around like that neither. So I never seen yeah. no shit like that. So I always was in denial. But when you hear these boys and these industry niggas talk that shit, yeah, yeah, you believe it. It's some, it's something. It's a door them niggas gotta walk through. Definitely. Let's get into it. Fair use. Let's, Fair go. Use. Let's do it. Hugs. Where are the stories? Why is there no story of anybody who ever sold a drug to me, did a drug with me, was around me when I was inebriated? I got five daughters. I got five sons. Why would we tell these ridiculous stories? Because it's co competition. You you feel like, well, why comedy, comedy guys can't just get along? Yes. Why, why, why didn't you get along with the other teams you were competing against? If you're a Denver Bronco, why you don't get along with the Cowboys? Something 
something wrong with you. But I don't disagree. I don't no, dislike no, all the no. Cowboys. Cat, damn, you like this? No, like, that's okay, not. Okay, what committee do you did like? Did you play against the team? Yes. I've taken 46 comedians with me on the road. 46. Okay. I'm not the comedian you can give that to. I only put on comedians that are funnier than me. Anybody that ever told you differently was a fat Faison liar. There's nobody yeah, you, like you, me in the business. Faison just go to straight. Faison said that getting a Netflix special is easy. I have 12 specials. Guess how many Faison got? Zero. So Why is he allowed to have conversations about real stand up people? We do not let people who are on the juice discuss real athletes. That's all. As a journalist, that's all. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I don't have, harbor any resentment to any of these entities because I can't be jealous. I've never seen them have anything that I ever wanted. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin, weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, in man, Listen, in 20 years, won't do an interview. Nobody's ever talked to her and that she's never wow. been interviewed anywhere. And now understand, I'm not talking about one person. What I just told you applies to seven people. How they all end up with that. That's part of what you get. I came in this business saying I was going to expose. When I talked about Michael Jackson, when I talked about R. Kelly, they canceled me for these things because why would you talk about another black dude? Race. Perfect alley you. What is the problem with him and Faison? That's Even why. Faison our nigga, man. Even though me and Faison bumped head one time, but. All in all, he's been my guy. I ain't, I ain't never. Yeah, had no I, I took care of that. I took care of that. I, I saw yeah, that. That's I just good. responded, you know. I, yeah, but at huh. the end of the day, man, we we cool with Faison, man. What was that issue like? What happened between them two? Like, what? oh, it was. I, I just texted him. Put a gun out on him. Right? I just texted him again. Ho, ho. You know what? Talk to him Faison. for two minutes. Yeah, I'll be right back. Said, I'm calling. Put a gun out on this nigga. If I, if I'm, if the, if I recall. I smoke a lot of weed, so don't hold me to that. Allegedly, I think Faison said Cat pulled a gun out on the nigga. That's why they got problems. Okay, I'll I be smoking hella weed. I'll be lost sometimes, my nigga. I, I'm only focused on money. Ask me anything about money, I remember all that shit. Any nigga that owe money and debt, I, niggas from years ago, oh, he owe that much. Anything about money, I know everything. But this random shit, I don't remember everything, but I, it's in my database. But I don't just focus on it like that. I focus on other things, uh, goals and shit. But I go in the database and remember that. He says something like the nigga either pulled a gun out on him, some type of weapon. I don't, I, don't, I don't think it was a knife. I think it was a gun. I think he pulled a gun out on Faison. So that's the issue. You feel me? But Gooch is going to, you know what I mean, get Faison, man. Salute to y'all, man. Salute to the whole chat, man. You know what I mean? Everybody tapping in from all around the world, little boys and girls, man. We ain't shit without y'all, man. You know, keep putting them comments up there. We're going to definitely read the comments. We definitely going to post some comments, man. You know, we tapped in, my nigga, period, man. This nigga cat got the internet going nuts, nigga. Hey, he viral, man. You know what I mean? The real cat. Not the, not the, not the, uh, uh not the rat, not Rat Williams. You know what I mean? Cat Williams. You know what I mean? Because Charleston White called himself Rat Williams. Nah, Cat Williams, the real guy, you know what I mean? Real pig. I still think Cat and D Dave Chappelle is the two best to me. Then you could go to whoever you want. But right now, Cat and Dave, because they give you knowledge and a lot of motherfucking comedy. A lot of people just give you comedy, but them niggas lace your boots on some of them shows. Like, did you know? That the government, like this nigga Cat Williams be talking some shit. So Gooch the greatest back in the building, twin tapping back in. I text him one more time. So hopefully Every um, time you tap out, you gotta reactivate. Nigga, put it up. Okay, here we go. Everybody in the building reactivate. Yada da. Bam. But uh I was just breaking it down, you know what I mean, while you was gone. Oh, you heard it. You heard it. You was in the back. Let's get back yeah. to the dialogue. Let's go. Fair use. This is not where the line is drawn.
is God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. Period. All of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. Hey man, we gotta get this nigga some protection. Free diving is diving into yourself. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Diving into your fears. Yeah, 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 the yeah, Black yeah, Mermaid Foundation's work is to create shit. access to ocean spaces. Yeah, and yeah, every some Kanye crash out shit right now, man. We need to put some protection around this nigga. <laughs> hey, he going there. Fair the use. The truth is the light. Fair use. Fair use. You want to talk some shit, Gooch? Uh, well, it's not. I don't think it's as risky or dangerous as Kanye. Because Kanye was, he dealt with some people yeah, that were able to make him not a billionaire in 10 minutes. Yeah, oh boy, they froze the nigga accounts hella shit. Yeah, so that, yeah. Now, I think if if he was to talk about them like that, yeah, I think it might be a little bit different. My thing is this, man. If you're a billionaire, right, how can a nigga cut your water off if you already got a billion in your account? So was Kanye ever actually a billionaire when he probably only had like four hundred million in his account? Actually, and then no, he, he, had, he had enough future revenues to say, "Oh, he got two billion. But if you got two billion, you got that shit in assets and liquid, whatever. It's gonna add up to two billion, right? You know why they can cut it how off? Because you lose, have it in their deals. bank. How the fuck he lose two deals and he get transformed to just four hundred million overnight? That okay. means so, he never had the money. You know, you know, you any nigga could pay to get in the Forbes, right? If right, but this, now right, but this you, is now. Right, When have you ever seen Jay Prince in the Forbes magazine? I wait. I've never people seen the Forbes magazine. Is people who want that clap, and the Forbes magazine will go off your network. They don't really go off what you actually got. You know what I mean? Like possess it and like they, don't go to your, 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 they don't go to your accountant and say, hey man, what's all this properties? What's all this uh, own? What? Nah, they go mm -hmm. off your network. So Kanye, mm -hmm. when he signed them deals, his network went to two billion. You feel right. me? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. If you had two billion in his account, you, know, you can't take a billion away from me. I'm still a billionaire, right? Well, he didn't have it liquid. Let's he say that. He didn't have that shit liquid. What? That was with the deal. That was predicted. Like if he go through the no. whole deal for all the years, this is what he will make. Right. Okay. That's all I wanted to make clear. Yeah. Like tomorrow. Okay. Just say tomorrow. Lord forbid. Yuck and Gooch sign a ten-year, one billion-dollar deal with whoever. We are on paper billionaires. Right. We don't have it, but it's predicted. So there we go. All right, let's get it, man. Back to the dialogue, man. Bono, man. You. Let's get Bono's in this motherfucker right quick. In and out, my nigga. Let's go. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Happy New Year. Happy nigga. New Year. Happy What's New up? Year. Happy New Year. Oh, yeah. You got to activate. We got to all activate. Bono's, man. New activation, man. Put your drinks up. Uh uh. Yada da. What up? What do you do, man? Happy New Year's, uh, Cat Williams. Hey, he been uh been spinning that exposing this for the longest, so it's nothing new. He's just putting it out on the more on a on, on a newer scale, and it's putting out names, hitting them up. Two box style, nigga. Hit them up. Hit them up. That's about it. That's about all. You know what I'm talking about. He's been doing this shit in this comedy. No. They're doing this shit. Nothing new. Nothing new, my nigga. You've been exposing the, the Illuminati, been talking shit about these comedians, but this is the first time we hear it in an uncut <laughs> interview. <laughs> hey, no attack. He just going straight, nigga, cutthroat. Like, hey, man, hey, watch this, man. <laughs> Leave that boy alone. <laughs> and I got the response. Right. <laughs> 
I got responses ready to it, nigga. Uh, Michael Blackson already already responded. Cedric the Entertainer oh, already responded. You know what I mean? And um, I'm gonna let him keep talking so uh, Mika Ali you me into Cedric the Entertainer. Yeah, hold on. I'm still left up. Later, Y'all smoking. Wait, we got it. Hold on. What happened? Y'all smoking? Let me get my hookah. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Good, I'm gonna tell you the only thing I don't like about your hookah that should be bubbling up. I don't, I don't like that bubble up shit, but it, it sounds like a dolphin be smoking on the crack when it be bubbling. <laughs> You got to put that yeah. shit on mute when you hit that motherfucker, man. It sounds like a, a, a pure crack pipe heated up and bubbling that motherfucker. Bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> Sizzle back. We put that shit on mute when you do them hits, the ball hits. You know? <laughs> I'm just saying, man. And then one more thing we can't do, man. This is a resolution, man. We cannot say. I'm a, whatever you said, I'm not even, fuck it. I got to say what you said. Don't ever say you make my ass itch ever again on our podcast, please. Don't, that's, you know, that's a word we got to retire on the podcast. We can't say you make my ass itch. We can't. Whoa. Whoa. It, it's, Whoa. It's, Slow it's, down, Turbo. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> he said that. He said that a couple times. So I'm like, nigga, please don't say that no more. Gooch, don't ever say that shit again. No Frank Ocean, no Ocean Spray, nigga, no motherfucker, no White Howard, no Howard, no none of that shit. But no, we ain't saying that. To get, to make it, to get, if a nigga mad, we ain't saying that. Slow <laughs> <laughs> down. We ain't saying that. You ain't get a nigga off the screen, we ain't saying that, but nigga, shit. <laughs> shit. Damn. We are retiring that phrase. That shit was last year, man. Period. Go, fair you. you got your shit uh, cocked and loaded? No Frank Ocean. No, no, no. The, the cold's got to heat up. Go ahead. All right, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Guys, this thing is stupid. Let's go. Right? <laughs> See y'all later. I didn't have no more of these. Amen, amen. Chief. Oh. Uh, I kind of <clears throat> get on here. All right. After that, I don't really kind of know where to go. Let me one more time. <laughs> mm, mm. Right. <laughs> you good now? Because the people want to know why would he get blackballed? Yeah, oh, because I was ask because that. because in thirty years I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to be doing, you would tell it. No, somebody come to tell me. Okay. I gather that. I value that. I'll pay for that. Come, tell me. I know so many things I shouldn't know, and they all know it. They all know it. Why? Because you don't make me the villain. Not the guy that raises black children and ain't never done a hard drug in his life and don't have no stories of doing nobody dirty. And they'll just go out and they'll lie. The, the industry doesn't mess with Cat because he didn't show up for the studio. No studios have ever said that. Look at my IMDb. It will show you that no studio has ever lost money with me on the script. How? That's why I'm saying that's why I can't let Ricky Smiley say he was supposed to play Money Mike because I wrote the words for Money Mike. I designed the hair for Money Mike. I collaborated with the wardrobe department and made outfits to make sure that no one in America would be wearing what Money Mike was wearing. I told them to go get the prowler. I then told them to paint it purple. I told them don't have an actor at playing a pimp. We could get an actual pimp Archbishop Magic Don Juan to play like I. I did far too much work for somebody to come years later and try to tag along just for their own self-aggrandizement. Hey, I can't miss that opportunity, man. Shout out to the church, man. Shout out to the Archbishop Don Juan, man. Unk, you feel me? Unk, man, uh, definitely, man, spiritual advisor, man. Shout out to Drew Down. That's Drew Down spiritual advisor, Snoop Dogg spiritual advisor. You know, all the niggas in the church, spiritual advisor, man. So big shout out to Bishop Don Juan, man. I can't just let that slide by, but Cat bought Bishop Don Juan to the set, nigga. Like, fuck hiring an actor, nigga. Hire the real expertism, nigga. American pimp only, nigga. Bishop Don Juan, man. Let the church say amen. Amen. Yada. Fair use. Let's go.
Why didn't Cube set the record straight? Terry Crews could have set the record straight. Mike Epps could have set the record straight. Why none of them set the record straight? That's what you were supposed to ask him when he told you those lies that but no I didn't one's know ever heard. Lie. Right, but he's telling you something no one's ever heard of. Nobody has ever heard. Oh, Matt Aff Ben Affleck and Matt Damon was in a movie, and somebody said, y'all should switch roles. And, like, this is a business. But that's the thing, Kat. <laughs> Normally, when people are giving you information, I'm thinking I'm hearing it for the first time, and they're giving information no one else knows or has ever heard. So I'm taking them at face value. These are like, this is like Steve Harvey telling people he used to be homeless. That's my story. That's not his story. Steve Harvey wasn't never homeless. When he, Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago, he was making $3,000 a show in cash and doing five shows a week. They, they just tell the stories. This, my, thanks to my wife, I'm where I am. You said that about the first wife. You forget that? You told us it was her. Then you went and married somebody else that think like a man. Like, what are you talking about? They just, they think they can rewrite history. That uh, uh, Guy Torrey did a beautiful special about the comedy store and Fat Tuesday, where he said that Steve and Cedric and Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish came through there and made all lies. Steve and Cedric never performed at the comedy store at all. Tiffany was only seen at the Laugh Factory. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called also playing that he was leading. No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant is? Maybe people don't understand the definitions of these words. Whoa. So Acorn Let's Acorn talk about that, a, yeah. Uh, financial tech company, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, let's I, do a good pause right there. Hold on, hold on, big pull up, let me. Oh, shit. I don't know how the fuck I got there. You get that right. <laughs> what the? Get that right. Yeah. So this one of them commercials. Oh, okay. Oh, well, one I thing, I say, this one of them commercials. You can't skip. Fair, hold on, let's land right there though. Fair use, man. Talk your shit. He Go just on. did his documentary with Chris Rock where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. Yeah, it was. So how? how simultaneous. I'm trying to pause it. Gooch, what you want to say, man? He going in on. So, so basically, what he's saying that uh, Kevin Hart was put in position that he didn't earn it. Um, I'm gonna give you the screen. Elaborate more, cause I, you got some faces going on. Like you know, that people got to see see your, your your responses and your your your, your body language. Well, no emotion, but uh, I mean, cause I listen pretty well. So basically, he says Kevin Hart comes from Philly. Um, being that no one was waiting in line for him, he wasn't a big success or whatever. And all of a sudden, he has TV shows and a movie, whatever. So basically, what he's saying that Kevin Hart is a industry plant. So okay, he's not giving, but go ahead. I just wanted to ask you a question. What is this TV show that he's talking about? Cause I've never seen a Kevin Hart TV show. When he first you don't remember the Kevin Hart TV show? Hold on, let me, the name of it was right now, hold on. Please, please tell me. Cause I, I ain't never, me, I ain't never seen it. I remember when it first came out. Hold on. Oh, so you remember the show? <laughs> Kevin Hart TV shows. Uh, his TV shows were. Hold on, how many TV shows? Real Kevin Hart Husbands had? of Hollywood. I thought it was a Real Husbands of Hollywood. No, he had like a. Uh, it it only did like two or three episodes and then they canceled it. But he didn't have Real Husbands of Hollywood before Soul Plane. That shit came after Soul Plane. 
Yeah, that was after Soul Plane, but he had a a show on. Hold on. They, said it, right. on, they said it was on ABC in two. It was on ABC, and they did like four episodes, and then they got rid of it. Before Soul Plane, I never seen it, so it was only four episodes. I never see it if it didn't go through a whole season. Shit. Okay, do, hey, uh, chat room, do me a favor. What was the name of it? Chat, give us the name of the shit. What's the name of the show that Kevin, the Big Horse? No, hell, I don't think that was it. Somebody said the big horse, like question, like nah, that ain't it. They said never seen or heard of it either. I ain't seen that shit or heard of the shit. He did oh. a show in DC. Kevin Hart's TV show on ABC. It was called Big House. They said Big House. They said Big House. It's called. There you go. That's it. Okay, so Big House. Okay, my bad. I, I never seen it. Okay, now y'all said y'all get them read. The Big House was originally um, greenlit, later canceled by ABC. Sadly, Kevin Hart and the cast only found out moments before the show was announced. Okay, so that shit got canceled before it even yeah. seen a day of life. Yep. Okay, Jose. All right, cool. So what's the beef between him and Kevin Hart? That's another question I got to ask. Is it the battle of the short guys? Hey, Napoleon, you know, niggas got that Napoleon complex. Hey, <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite. Who, who, who's the Napoleon? <laughs> who's the Napoleon mm -hmm. Dynamite? But where's the beef? Like, I think. Kevin Hart can't win your beef. What's they beef? Did they, they start clowning each other like him and, like, I seen Kevin Hart and Michael Blackson was roasting each other for a minute. I ain't never seen Cat and Kevin Hart go on the roast. You know what I mean? Like when it was COVID, comedians was killing each other. Like they, they was bored. They was going at it on live. I never seen Cat going at it on live with a Kevin Hart or a Michael Blackston or you know, uh, uh, shit, our people's Corey Holcomb or whoever like that was going on on live, going crazy. You know what I mean? During the pandemic, so I, I never knew it was a beef between him. And okay. Kevin. He's saying that he sold his soul, but. You know what? Um, Corey is good friends. Hold on. Let me ask Corey something. Real That's quick. what we need to get. We need to get Corey Oakham in this motherfucker, mate. I'm, te I'm de testing right now. And salute to Corey Oakham for having me on the show last night, man. That Jesus juice kicked in at the end. I forgot to promote the podcast, all the shit, man. You know. Nigga, I was saying my resolutions and froze up on that because the drink kicked in on the nigga, man. I damn near drunk that whole bottle. They only took two sips. I drunk the whole bottle went right to the head. Niggas usually help me with the piece of juice. So that shit hit me like last minute and I forgot everything. So my bag, you know? No, 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 no. You good. You good. We good money. We making up for it now. We good money, nigga. Yada da. Good money. All right, play a little bit more. We're going to wait for Corey's response. Hey, but, uh, I never knew that him. I think it's competitive. If you want to, I think I think since they say Kevin Hart is the top, and they not saying Cat is one of the tops, it's competitive. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's like Nas and Jay Z. It's one of those. You feel me? Right. That's what I think from the outside of looking in. Let's go. Fair use. Let's go. Fair use. Club Shay Shay. Obviously, was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It didn't happen. It didn't happen. And I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies, but Jussie Smollett going to keep lying until you say we don't believe you. Like it's important in the checks and balances of the universe that liars not get to make complete narratives for themselves. Are you not afraid about being blackballed again? These are some power people. What do you mean again? <laughs> These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. That's why, you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. Mm. They all do the same job. Mm. Why wow. do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy for 25 years? If what I say ain't the case. 
it's a cabal. It's a it's a consortium. They they rock with who they rock with and they don't with who they don't. But I'm not scared of being the competition any more than you were when you lined up uh, uh, across from a superior team. Yeah, on paper, they're a better team. Right. They have all the assets and resources and we don't. But let us get on the line, boy, boy, and see if that factors in. I, I guarantee you it won't. Wow. Because Shannon Sharp got to be a different person than that other person. Absolutely. And he always was. That doesn't change when I change teams. That remains the same. That's how a legacy is built. So all of these shortcut takers, I, I was they canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out. But he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. What am I supposed to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there. It's three other black guys on there. Woo. Huh. So you wonder what they did to get that. <laughs> I told him no. What y'all do? <laughs> <laughs> and this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. Behind my back, I'm nothing. I'm just a regular old comedian that's bitter and jealous. But in my face, no, no, no. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. I've not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. They tell you that themselves. I can't do that because I. Steve told you that he stopped doing stand up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. What? You called Ocean Eleven to get that nigga's part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? So on the behalf of Bernie, I, I would have to say what I have to say. Have you have ever been on, Have you ever been on tour with any of these guys? The guy, I, every guy I mentioned to you is not funny out there in real life. Hey, so you, hey, you. It's your girl Simone. So look, hey, that's a perfect time to tap in too. God damn, yo, is that LL wife? Yeah. Yo, she look older than L. Shit. Yeah, she doesn't have to be. Yeah, she don't have to be on TV and um sell yeah. tickets every day. Yeah. Um, Corey will be here in about five minutes, brother. Okay, cool, man. Let's get it going. Fair use. Fair use, man. Shout out LL Cool J and his I wife. I decided to design jewelry for Simone Hey, she's gorgeous though. Salute to LL. Yeah. So no. Faison's never done his own tour in 30 years. Steve Harvey don't do stand up no more. Cedric doesn't write. I'm sorry, he doesn't write. Ricky Smiley has been playing the same old black woman forever. Like you can't get a young fan base with that. Like you gotta be doing karaoke around the country to make that work. Right. And he is. But I'm a stand-up comedian. This is my 19th 100-city tour. I'm not going to have a conversation with these lazy bums that'll take a shortcut at any point. Yes, it's easier for you to juice than to get in the gym. But you don't get to bring that body in here talking crazy. Talk about how good you look. What? No, no, there's too many comics out there that are putting their life on the line to tell these jokes, man. Okay, let's get to your upbringing. We're gonna circle back and we'll get some. Huh? I want to protect him real quick because you had said for the Kings of Comedy, it was in 2018, 2019. But did you mean 1999? Because it came out in 2000. So I just want to make no, I didn't, no, no, no. So what I meant to say was remember, he said, I couldn't do stand up anymore. I had seven TV shows. I said he didn't have any of those TV shows at the time. I know you talking about, you talking about Cedric. Joke stealer from Cedric. Yeah, Cedric. Oh, okay, so, so, said that okay. 2018, 2019, but it came out in 2000, so I just want to make sure. Okay, no, 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 no. 
what comes out in 2000? The, the original Kings of Comedy. Right. My, I'm on BET's Comic View, and they're using this as the commercial in 1998. Okay. That's why I'm saying, yeah. So, so if I, yeah. yeah. So if I yeah. said the dates no, wrong, just, yeah. Yes. So yes. let's go ahead and clear that up. Okay. You said, yeah. I had Cedric on here, and I asked him about the joke stealing, and yeah. he said the timeline doesn't add up. Correct. To your to to that point, you say. Right. So he thought that I was just a no name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. Right. It had done so well on BET's Comic View that they had made it part of the commercial. So part of the commercial of make sure you tune in to BET was you seeing me doing this joke. Right. And this joke is one of those jokes in comedy where you set it up and it takes a little longer to set it up. It takes about three minutes. But then you're just hitting them with jokes after right. that because you don't have to set it up. Right. Uh, Mark Curry had already helped me work on this joke because I thought it was good because I was getting a standing ovation on it. He had me go back in the lab to help me craft it to be an even more powerful joke. So this is not just a random joke. This is my very best joke, and it's my last joke, and it's my closing joke. Okay. 1998, I'm doing this joke. It's on Comic View. Cedric comes to the comedy store. He watches me in the audience. He comes backstage. He tells me what a great job I did and how much he loves the joke. Two years later, he's doing that as his last joke on the Kings of Comedy and he's doing it verbatim. He's just changed my car into a spaceship. Boom, perfect alley -oop. Can I display what Kat is talking about? Yes, you may, sir. Yes, you may. Fair use, fair use, man. So fair I'm, use. I'm gonna um, pull up the, uh, the, the, the joke that Cat Williams is talking about that uh, said, it said is my nigga, but he said, now y'all be the judge of this joke. Because this is, uh, you know, you you can say whatever it is, but this is a side by side. And shout out to Urban uh, Politics. No, this is the where's the joke at? Okay, we have the joke resurfaces. Okay, here we go. Okay, yeah, yeah. Tell me who who took it. Cat made it first, allegedly. This is side by side, Bunny and Clyde. Shout out to, uh, I don't even know how to say that nigga name because I don't know how to read like Goose know how to read. So uh, fair use, man. Get uh, Yaeem Stacy, man. Yaeem Stacy, man. Follow Yaeem Stacy. He broke this shit down to the very last compound. He bought the footage back to back. Let's see what jokes, if it's the same joke or if it's not. Y'all be the judge. Let's go. I'll catch y'all up with that later but first thing first initially i played the clip of Cedric the entertainer doing a joke that cat williams said that was stolen from him but since then i did stumble across cat williams performing this joke on common view now i want you guys to be the judges let me know if you think said stole this joke from cat now if you ever had your car radio up so loud that you couldn't hear the damn thing when it cut off and then you Now, once again, here goes Cedric the Entertainer doing his joke from Kings of Comedy. They gonna move to the moon. Ain't gonna happen. Y'all move to the moon, damn it, we coming to the moon. Oh, we be right behind y'all in space shuttles with Cadillac grills, nigga. 
Look at just rolling one headlight out. Tags be all wrong. All base. Y'all know we'll drive a space shuttle too. That's right up our damn alley. A space shuttle is long. They ain't scared of no black folk. We'll drive a space shuttle. We grew up driving long for cars. We'll drive a space shuttle like it's a 72 deuce and a quarter. We, 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 we get us a cigarette. We get us, we be in a space shuttle like it's a 72 deuce. We get us Okay, so both of them was in the car. That's the premise of the joke. Music being too loud, you got to turn it down. It may be something to that, or it may be just too vague to say that he stole the joke. What y'all think? But like I told Hey, what y'all think, my nigga? Shit. He stole that joke. And the reason we know Cat isn't lying, because you can look at the, the quality of Cat's video and see it's older than Sad's video. And you can see they use the same arm movement. Right. He did the same arm up and the same shifting gear like Cat did. Yeah, sat down like Cat, everything. Sat down in a chair, leaned back and did the shifting gears and had the, the same arm. Yeah. So, Cat can talk his shit, man. It's me, bro. Oh, come on, man. Let's get our nigga in the building right quick. Blood, what's up with Blood, man? That be blood, New Year, nigga. Hey, how you doing, bro, bro? No, what's up with Cuz, you know? My thing is this, and that's a Bay Area term. What's up with blood? But anyway, what's up with cuz, man? The funniest thing is, we don't give a shit about that. <laughs> I'm just leaving, uh, right now I'm leaving um, La Louisiana. Hey, you got a bat, you got a boss plate. Yeah, they stayed open for me. Hey, check this out. What you think about Cat Williams? Is, uh, you know, exposing, you know, that the deep secrets behind me. Cat. I actually agree with Cat. Double plastic, Yale Buck. Hold on, I'm Hey, hey, cut that shit off. You don't get this blur. No, I'm, I'm, that's right. My bad. I'm in my car. <clears throat> my bad. Um, Cat is right. And all these people happen to the jokes. It's a good hot topic that I think y'all should get on for a second because I'm about to try to be a comedian, kind of. I don't know. It's hard. That shit ain't no joke. But so you think there's an official tissue that uh, uh, Cedric the Entertainer stole Cat Williams' joke? Yep. We seen it. I mean, it wasn't exactly like it, but it, it looked very resemblance. It had a lot of resemblance to what Cat Williams, I mean, Cat Williams did. Definitely. Yeah, it was close. If it, it, Hey, man, check this out. If I got a pair of Jordans for Christmas, and that shit was wrapped up in some green Christmas gift, and then I got another Jordan the next year, the same pair, but it was wrapped up in a blue Christmas gift. It's the same pair of Jordans. I don't give a fuck how you wrap it and, and trap it. It's the same pair of Jordans. That's a great comparison. That shit looked like the same that pair That is of a Jordan. great comparison. You know what? Damn. With a different Christmas wrap and a bow. I'm sorry. That's a, mm -hmm. a great comparison. I want to know what Gucci think about that one. So, well, well, with me, you know, being in the writing um, form of it, the reason is, 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 is not good because people this is their their own creative writing and for you to what happens in, in comedy a lot is when cat was doing that when said saw it he probably had no idea the cat would blow up and be who he was a lot of ogs they look for new comics mm. and if they think they're not going to blow up they take the joke okay. which isn't okay. cool I, I, I it's, it's about original you know about originality and um you know, said you know, it's not, nothing wrong for said to say, you know what, my bad. Because at the end of the day, we all took from someone to be who we are now. Michael Jordan watched Dr. J. Kobe watched Michael Jordan. Um, nah. Penny Hardaway watched Magic. Nah. And then from all those people, we have a LeBron James. So we all watched someone 
Well, Jeff and I can contest to this. When Jeff no, first started going on the No, 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 nigga, no. you come from, no, yo, break it down in rap terms because we yeah, are not uh, NBA players. Oh, you know, no. right. let, let me break it down in rap terms. Goose, Goose the Great, let's take it back nah. to the oh, no. so, nigga, oh, no. The reason why I was people, let me get this straight. This go, man, ahead. go ahead, now your dread, bro. Hey, check this out, mate. The reason why we was beefing with Master P in the 90s, because in the 90s and the early 2000s and the 80s, it was all about originality. Nigga, you couldn't try the nigga shit. You couldn't do the same old shit, the same shit, oh the same on. beats, the same rhyme, the same bar. Nigga, Put me on just black. Fight, nigga. I want a lot. Nigga, even with break this, you see. Nah, he's gonna get a blurt. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna get a blurt. Oh, yeah, he gotta cut that shit off, blood. Period. But at the end of the day, my nigga, even on. Hey, you gotta. Yeah, we're gonna take him off the stage so he gets his life together. But anyway, um, even on B Street, nigga, you seen the. Uh, I got this shit on my shit. When a nigga just came in the party and started breaking, like, yo, son, you bite. That's our moves, nigga. Yo, we from woo woo woo. Even in dancing, you couldn't do the same shit. So the same with comedy shit. You can't do this. This is what Kat's saying. Like back in our day, you couldn't do that shit. Nowadays, it's a copy. Everybody copying and it's cool. You know, so niggas uh, arrive with it. Kat's saying that shit ain't cool, period. And it wasn't cool with us. With rap shit, nobody could fight our shit. Nobody could yeah. fight our beats like Teresa and saying they the, uh, the, the 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 fucking other clan, nigga, nigga the Jap clan. No, it's Look. the big clan. Period. Look. Like, come on, man, niggas can bite. So that's what the nigga Kevin Hart was saying, my nigga. And we showed footage of a nigga. That's what Cat Williams was saying. Cat Williams, Cat Williams. My bad. My yeah. bad. Cat Williams was saying. My bad. Let's get this nigga back in, man. Hey, you you done playing music? Hold on, let me unmute you. Let me unmute you. You it's done playing music? You got, it's hard when you got. Tobacco and weed and no flames. Okay, so um yes, I no. Oh my god, me and Yuck never agree hundred percent. But you can't bite nobody shit. Fuck that. And as an MC, it kind of goes a little bit more heartening than anyone else profession. And it's not like Gooch. I know you said <laughs> Yeah, let me okay. Let me let, let me explain sports, what I was saying. Sports, sports is different, right? No, crap. let me let me when niggas let, is creating crap, sports is it, it, it's niggas, it, niggas, it, niggas, it, you know what I mean? Right, Survival right. The fitness is uh, different from a nigga creating a Picasso and somebody paint the same picture. That's a difference, my nigga. Then sports, you feel me? Right. Right. Name the right. sports and enjoying with Kobe. You can't compare that. Sports, right, no, but still sharp as steel. They gladiators. They got right. uh, uh, Goose's trade. Goose's squabble. <laughs> I can't still fucking Floyd shit. That left Bro, hand still liver. That's, gonna kill you. that's a step. Okay, let me explain what I was saying. When I was a big LL fan growing up, he made Rock the Bells. I had a song called Fix the Bells. It, I took a bit from everybody and I became myself. You was fighting. I never knew this before. You bit. You bit him. Ah. Yeah. yeah, that's illegal. We're not that's right. That. But but I wasn't yeah. boots yet. I wasn't. I was still finding I don't myself. Know the fuck who you was? If you was boots, <laughs> if you was nigga, uh, no, I'm not. Nah. I don't care. I'm gonna pass me the bag of boots. Big, big, big I'm gonna get from the block, nigga. Whoever you was, nigga, you biting, b. Yo, you Come on. You can't do that. In the Hold on, man. Slow down, Turbo. Let's get Corey in this motherfucker, man. Yada da. Man, man, go. Corey, I'm, 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 hey, can y'all see me? No, nah, but we can hear you. That's all the count. What's going on, brother? Hey, hey I man, see your up, teeth, man? nigga. You're dark than a motherfucker, man. <laughs> 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 Corey, let me, Corey, let me ask you a question because you would be a professional comedian. In the world of comedy, how how common is it for people to take people's jokes? Hey man, all I'm saying is this, man. I think everybody that stole a joke before. Everybody that gave in and stole a joke before. That's my opinion. 
But have you, ever, have you ever have you ever stole a joke before? Yeah, I stole a joke from this comic in Ohio. The world should know who he is. He was very talented. His name's Stephen G. Stephen G. from Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. I did his joke a couple of times when I was stuck, and I ain't. I was a young comic though. I don't steal jokes now because I do Corey Holcomb on stage. You get what I'm saying? I right. grew into myself. But when I was young, even though I thought I was real talented, I gave in and I stole a joke before. But I'm telling you, most of the people who don't never claim stealing stuff, them be the main people out there stealing. Whether it be comedy, whether it be music, whether it be porno moves. Yeah. You got it. You got it. the last one you said. Porno moves ain't it? Niggas still porno moves. <laughs> Hell yeah, niggas still porno moves. What's that new shit they say motherfuckers do when they? they... <laughs> Come on, this nigga. Bro. Nah, nigga. So, this nigga hey, Corey, can I ask you? Did you see the Cat Williams interview at, on Club Shay Shay? I didn't see the whole thing, man. But it was bogus, man. It was bogus because out here in this world, man. We have to have the courage to talk about who we are as well. So if you got a person and they literally talking about everybody but ain't saying nothing about themselves, that's a red flag for me. And don't get it wrong. I don't want no problems with Cat. I root for Cat. I'm glad Cat got all the fame he got. But I'm saying, man, come on, Cat. You know I'm from the underground, homie. You, you yelling out the joke, Steve. You telling me you don't know nothing about that? Hey, hey, come on now, come on now. Was you, was you, was you with Cat at, um, at, at Wildin' Out? Hey man, let me tell you something about Cat Williams. Cat Williams is brilliant. When Cat mind is clear, he is one of the best. He is one of the best. But sometimes Cat be on some stuff where you be like, man, what's wrong with him, man? I done seen Cat do stuff where I'll be like, man, Cat, why you do that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But but joke stealing, hey, man, don't nobody want to talk about joke stealing, man. Y'all all the stole jokes, including Cat. Alice Thomas stole $40 from you. <laughs> Alex, Alex, yeah, Alex Thomas, he, but he a real joke thief, man. Uh, uh, I heard he a power bottom. <laughs> oh shit! Here we go. We going viral. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about G String? Oh, he's super. He is super joke thief, man. Man, look. Let, let me tell you something, man. Y'all need to. Y'all need to try to get a hold to Shantae Wayans. I'm name dropping, and I shouldn't do this, but I'm doing it. Get a hold of Shantae Wayans. Ask Shantae Wayans what she used to do for Cat. While the other comics was on stage. No. And I could have saved this for the 5150 show, but I'm going to give y'all the business, man. Look, stop that joke stealing stuff. Cedric the Entertainer is one of the best comedians from our underground where we came up. Cedric the Entertainer, if you want to say he stole the joke, I don't know nothing about it, but I'm telling you. Cedric the Entertainer is one of the best ever. Not a hype job. He ain't got it. All that stuff about Cedric only had four specials. I don't care what special Cedric had. Cedric is a headliner. He, like, you remember Cam Newton said game changers? Yeah. Cedric a game changer in the comedy business. Okay. Okay. Oh, no. Absolutely. Like, Corey is absolutely right. Like, 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 somebody responded, I think said, said uh, some shit. He responded and said, like, yo, okay. That, like, okay. Say if I Can't did. You oh, hold, hold on. I, I ain't got to be seen. I, I put it on Corey because I want him to respond to this. Um, he said, nigga, that's one joke. You act like. All the other jokes ain't made my career. Like, nigga, you act like one joke, even if that happened. Like, that one joke didn't defy me, nigga. I'm Cedric because of all the other shit I did. Nobody remembered that joke, basically. 
You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, you, yeah you can't you can't take away a nigga accolades from one joke. You can't. All I'm saying is, man, I you, you saw I said, I don't know what happened with the joke, but I'm gonna tell you something, man. It's a comic named JB Smooth. This was one of the greatest underground comics ever. But JB Smooth started being around, you know, the other crowd, Larry David and all them. They funny what? too. They funny too, but when JB Smooth was in his element, the underground, he was one of the best ever. And I'm telling you, I dare somebody to say this ain't true, because I could get a thousand comics to bag me up. On Cat First Special. Okay. Well, I root for Cat. I root for Cat. But that joke where he do like, man, if you listen to this song, you can do anything off this song. That's JB Smooth joke, homie. I can get a thousand comics to bag me up. I can get a thousand me, comics me, to bag me up. Me being a Cat Williams fan, he starts his shows off with the music. Absolutely. And he said, I'm he talking about, I want to make sure people understand it's a certain joke he did. I think this was his first special where it's like, man, it's a, I can get a thousand comics to tell you. Man, all these cats, let me tell you something about the cats that's really old. I'm not knocking none of them. I'm not knocking none of them. I am so glad Cat Williams is getting money. Cat Williams stood out in movies. When he was in movies, he stood out. Y'all heard that? Facts. Facts. But when it comes to jokes, nigga, Cedric the Entertainer is one of the elites. And I don't get no, I ain't got no motherfucking dog in this fight. Cedric the Entertainer, one of the elites. I can't say that about a lot of other people. But Ced is one of the few comics that been rocking the house for 30 years plus. Corey, it's a, it's a, I don't know if you know, I mean, you probably do. It's a dude out of New York that um, he's very animated on stage. He can do, he can do impressions. He can do Jamaicans. He can do all kind of shit. Like when you see him, I forget his name. And when you see other people, you definitely know it came from him. They Man, what? I think it, who? What's his name? No, what what name did you say, Corey? I don't know. I don't know which guy you talk about, but I done met some guys in New York, and look, they ain't on TV. They ain't on nothing, but they was the kings of the underground in New York. Okay, name so one look, dude, Corey, Corey, no, no, no. I think we're talking about the same person. Yo, 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 no, no, fuck the person I'm talking about. Let's talk about this. Another thing that Cat Williams said that since you said New York, that Kevin Hart was, you know, we did this special with, with, with him and Chris Rock, and they talked about how he blew up in, on the East Coast first. And he landed on that, like, how do a motherfucker come from the East Coast and just be put at the top? You know what I mean? Got a TV show, got an airplane on the first, you know what I mean? alley -oop. Now, Corey, we done talked about you driving your scraper to, to, to fucking L.A. You know what I mean? To, to get get on. You had to do it. You had to do Watermelon Heist. Your first movie wasn't Soul Plane. So what Cat Williams said about Kevin Hart tapping down and getting the, the red carpet treatment, do you think that shit is true or not? I'm going to tell you like this. I do this to a fault, and you'll be able to understand what I'm saying. Kevin Hart and his entire entourage is even good than a motherfucker. You hear me, yeah? I hear you. I know that. It's not just it's not just Kevin Hart, the nigga who can't have cut Kevin Hart hair, the nigga who do security, the everybody in Kevin Hart camp is straight is is good is millionaire so, so so it's very hard for me to say anything disparaging about kevin hart because let me tell you something kevin hart helped me tremendously he helped me 
So I'm saying whatever Kevin Hart did that people want to say he did, it's hard for Corey Holcomb to say anything about Kevin Hart because it's a lot of people out here who are doing well because Kevin Hart is doing well. Now, can a lot of these people who talk the shit about everybody say that? No. Hell nah. I mean, you talk about some females. You talk about some female. No, I mean, Greg, 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 you ain't even give me the shit on Kevin Hart. <laughs> you asked me wrong. I, I think the dude's name is Freddie Ricks, I think. Who? Freddie Ricks. Freddie Ricks is a comedian. If you ever saw him perform, you will see where most of them other comics from New York get their idea from. Because when you see right. the original person, you'll be like, this is where they got that from. Right, right. Right. I know. See the underground. When I was coming up, we all know each other, man. We all know everybody who was the joke thieves, everybody who was the dirt bags who used to steal your deposit, fly you in, and you get a quarter of the money you' supposed to get. But I'm saying, like, yo, back on Cat. I hope I ain't burning no bridges with Cat. But I tell Cat, Cat, you got to tell on yourself too, man. You can't just talk about everybody and not tell on yourself. Come on, now. Come on, now. I'm sitting there watching you say everything about everybody, but what about all the stuff you did that you know is disparaging? Okay. Okay. All right, do me a favor. Hey, yep. Since he's right. driving, let's, let's give him a little bit more so he can see some of it while he drives. All right, for sure. Um, I'm, I'm, um, Put on some shit with uh, what Cat Williams was talking about getting booed. Have you ever got booed before, Corey? Hell yeah, I got booed. Let me tell you about it. Talk your shit. I was at Clark Atlanta. That's the one I remember the most. The dean, she was some feminist bitch, walk up to me right before I go up, say, You can't curse. I say, These grown motherfuckers. But anyway, uh, I had to check in my hand anyway. Long story short, I tried not to curse. After about 15 minutes, I was like, fuck this, I'm finna be me. I told them kids, if your mama wasn't shit, ain't nothing at this school they could teach you that's gonna help you be shit. And everybody was booing me except the janitors and the police. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga, man. All, oh, you, all you little bitches who mama wasn't shit, y'all might as well go to Magic City and get some real money right now while you're still <laughs> young and that monkey bounce back. <laughs> this nigga's crazy. Oh, yeah, they booed me for that in college. <clears throat> Fuck them. Hey, Court, while you driving, we're going to play a little bit more so you can see it, okay? I, I mean, but, like, I, I want to ask you a question. The cat Go ahead. Say he, don't no he, he don't do drugs? Let me play. Uh, <laughs> hey. He, he does say that. He said he don't do drugs. All right, so who am I to say what a nigga do? But I'm just saying, I'm telling you, it's two Cat Williams. It's a Cat Williams that's a brilliant, elite comic. Like, when he was calm, he roasted old girl on that radio in Atlanta. Wanda. Excellent. Wanda. That's the cat that you can't, you can't stop that cat. Cat used to freestyle and wilding out. My mouth used to drop. I'd be like, man, he be on his shit. But then it's another cat. I can't say, if Cat say he don't do drugs, he don't do drugs then. But I'm saying, it's another cat. But you be like, what the fuck is wrong with my nigga? So look, I, I done been, you know, my mom, you know, I done been around alcoholics and shit. Recipes of my mom. What if it's some alcoholism that changed a nigga to make a nigga black out? I done seen niggas drink alcohol, black out, you know, do wild shit, wake up and don't remember what they did. 
What if he one of those? Yeah. Whatever but, um, it is, it's two different cats. And like we say, we can get a million motherfuckers in the underground to bag nah. this up. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the other cat. This is the cat that got booed in the Bay Area. This one of this nigga was in the Yay Area. Richie Rich, all my niggas. This was ugly for cat. This was an ugly moment. But uh, everybody thought he was off something different than, you know, hey. <laughs> hey, right. hey, hey, hey. Right. Hold on, man. Let me see if this is the one. <laughs> Oh yeah, boom! Oakland meltdown. Oh my lord, this is here. We go. Fair use, fair use, y'all. Fair use, town business, man. But this is when a nigga thought he was on something else. Let's go. He gets booed off the stage. Let's go. (laughs) You're fired. You're fired. Are you serious? He is dumb. Hey, if somebody tell me about this from where I live. My sister said on Facebook, she said that he said, like, watching live. When I walk up this weekend, and then I walk up in the Oracle. Here, pussy niggas booing me. But when I'm in the back, they love me like an Israeli. It's like niggas be jewing me. And your girl got my penis in her mouth. Like she bubble gum with me. I'm sick with it. I'm like E40, I got the flu in me. I get new money from new dummies. It's like I got new in me. And these niggas got the nerve to boo the Savior. Boo in Christ, the Son of God. They don't really know. They can boo me twice. I'm twice as hard. You might as well give me 20, nigga. That's how much the album costs, fuck boy. But I bet if you can walk to your car, I can show your bitch a dick, she'll enjoy it. So why don't you take your pussy ass on over there, nigga, before I fucking catch you. Or you can pull your bank out and I'll match you. But you ain't gonna do shit but get punched in the face. Oh, San Francisco 49er ass, faggot ass, nigga. Get out of here, you're not a lion in this race. I'm gonna freestyle these niggas, me style these niggas. I'm Cat Williams the gangsta, I'm G style these niggas. I don't need no music, I can do it long. Capoco. If a nigga say fuck me, I hit him with a fuck your tongue. I don't give a fuck. I brought John Witherspoon, and I got three bad bitches waiting at the waterfront at my hotel room. So if you don't like me, and you think I'm stunting, then come get your pussy ass whooped outside my statue of Jack London. Or, or I can find one of them bitches and I rescue from the track and have us slice your pussy ass neck and leave you on the railroad track. It don't really matter to me. I don't give a fuck. I roll with G-O-D and the nation. If you don't like me, catch me eating the cherry pie. Cause it's seasonal, that nation. Fuck these niggas. I'm the boss. I got so much sauce, I'm ever in the roast. I don't give a fuck. Ask your bitch. I bet she know me. I bet that bitch can't talk my dick outside the Yoshi's. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> fuck what these niggas talk about. No, no. No, no, I don't want to hear it. If you want to tell me, catch me while I'm walking Lake Merritt. Nah, 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 nah. I know, you paid for some laughs. <laughs> Get on your cell phone, tell them meet you at Telegraph. Get it in cell phone, Telegraph, it's the same thing. Anyway, I'm too good. Why people don't like me? I'm too hey. good. Bitches love me. I'm so good. Hey, he fucked it up. Getting booed. He, hey, hey, Corey, he fucked it up getting booed, my nigga. Sorry about that. What no, you guys let, say? Me, let me tell you something, man. I'm telling you, it's two cats. It's two Cat Williams. It's a nigga, that nigga right there that people can't understand because he said he don't do drugs, right? So nobody can understand why that, where that nigga come from. <laughs> But then it's a Cat Williams that's brilliant. That's brilliant. That nigga used to be doing them freestyles on Wildin' Out and all that shit, man. Cat Williams was that nigga. But I'm saying, like, yo, 
Sometimes it's a nigga that be in Cat Williams' body. I do not know that nigga. That's the nigga. Hey, 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 Corey. That's the nigga that used to hang out with Shug. That's the gangster cat. <laughs> hey man, look man. I ain't trying to rub it in on nobody because I ain't built like that. But I don't. Hey man, when you talk about everybody, but don't talk about yourself, knowing you got a lot of demons, that shit ain't cool, man. That's why I talk about myself, man. I, I talk about myself on my show, so when that shit hit the streets, everybody be like, oh, he already told us he did that. What? What? Right. Hey, yo, give him um, give him, give him a little bit of the interview real quick. All right. Now, he's seen the interview, but we'll, we'll, we'll go back in the interview. No problem. No problem. I ain't really seen the interview all the way through, but the first part I saw, my mouth was on the ground. I was like, oh, shit. Cool out, my nigga. You don't want motherfuckers to start digging up your dirt. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know what I'm saying? You ain't claiming your dirt. If you claiming your dirt, even if motherfuckers dig it up, you be like, well, that's what he said he used to do. Look, before I go, before I go into, um, before I go into the, um, the footage about, uh, you know, the other footage on, um, you know, the interview. Can I put uh, uh, fucking Cedric, the entertainer's response? Yeah, let's hear it. Of course, of course. But see, motherfuckers going to tell you, man, said is motherfucking the real deal, dog. I don't give a fuck what happened with a joke. I mean, we don't want nobody taking our jokes. And, and maybe it, it got up under a nigga's skin in a way. But... I'm just saying, man, I, I'm, I, I think I got enough motherfucking juice in this game to let you know. Cedric the Entertainer, when him and Bernie was on Kings of Comedy, them two are the real Kings of Comedy. Facts. Yeah. And that ain't dissing nobody else, but I'm saying, you can't take nothing away from them two as far as it go with comedy. Facts. Right. Facts. And I went to the Kings of Comedy show, me and my wife, and that shit, yo, I'm going to tell you, them two niggas killed that shit. Period. Yeah, yeah, they killed and I was there. I was there when Eddie Griffin was on that shit. It was right. them two and Eddie Griffin. Eddie Griffin murdered that. They kicked him off the shit. I don't know why he got kicked off, but Eddie Griffin was on the one that I went in L.A. and that nigga I murdered it was him. Got off and I wasn't even there. I know why Eddie Griffin got kicked off. You can't control Eddie Griffin. Right. Motherfucker finna control Eddie Griffin. Ain't no motherfucker finna tell Eddie Griffin, hey man, I only want you to do this much time because we, man, Eddie Griffin is his own man. To a, right. if they want to say that's to a detriment, okay, but ain't nobody finna control Eddie Griffin. So yeah, they weeded. They I can see them weeding off Eddie Griffin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was a part two. Because they had uh, 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 fucking George Lopez on that shit too. Remember well, that one? Yeah, that that one that one the Kings of Comedy tour that was called. Uh, I forget they had Lopez hosting it. Yeah, they had Lopez on it. They had Eddie Griffin, so it wasn't the Kings of Comedy. You're right. So that was yeah, that one. I forgot the name but, of that tour, but that tour was that man Eddie Griffin. You could put him in there with one of the greatest from the underground. When Eddie Griffin. On top of his game, that motherfucker one of the greatest in the underground. Facts. Hell yeah. Facts. No doubt. And you, nigga, I want, <laughs> and then, this is what I told Gooch, you know, now that you're here. I said, he didn't say nothing bad about Corey Holcomb. He has a lot of respect for you. How do you feel about that? Like, I don't want to, I don't want you to burn no bridges. Like, Cat seemed like he got a lot of respect for you. He didn't mention hey, you. Man, he didn't look, say no bullshit look. about you. You feel me? I get them niggas, they respect, man. Cat Williams, man. I am so glad Cat Williams got on and motherfucking, man, Cat Williams made a boatload of money in this game, dog. Cat Williams, man, right. Cat Williams. Look, motherfuckers say what they want to say. Cat got on, and in the movies, he stood out in a way where motherfucker, you say what you want to say. That Money Mike shit, man, that motherfucker Cat Williams became a motherfucking polarizing figure in the black community that's why they spend money to go see him when he come to town and is performing that's the truth 
And then look, one more thing. Going back to the, the 5150 podcast you had last night, you had me co-host your shit. We was talking about how um, not only your girl is a reflection of you, but your crew is a reflection of you, right? So boom, yeah. Kevin Hart, his crew, boom, superior, big reflection. But then you got Cat's crew. And you know Cat crew. You got Linnell, you got Red Grant, you got all the other, you know what I mean, the other female comic, you got all them people and they all looking good. I, I just seen Linnell on, on Netflix, you know, roll it out, roll big rings, she doing good. That's from being on tour with Cat Williams. We ain't seen Linnell do nothing but that, period. Right. It ain't her podcast, her podcast ain't lit like that, salute to her, but that, that's like side money shit. The real money is her doing them dates with Cat, Red Grant. We ain't heard him. We ain't seen Red Grant at the Improv. Nigga, you be at the Improv every week. When the last time you seen Red Grant there? And he was discovered there, right? Yeah, Red Grant, Red Grant was out there. Red Grant, Red Grant, part of the same underground that I'm, I'm, I'm from. Red Grant, he ate good with Cat. Cat, Cat got them niggas some, man, Cat got them niggas some money, man. Yeah, hey, so man, just like Kevin Hart in this man, group. Man, when, when you can pay your bills in L.A. off entertainment, that's a blessing. It's a blessing, my nigga. So, Gooch, yeah. what, we, what, yes, we, what was the footage I was about to... <laughs> Let's go to the um, hour, 20-minute mark. Okay, cool. I wanted to uh, say Cedric Entertainer, Cedric the Entertainer response. Can I do that right quick? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's see what Sarah had to say about the shit, man. And um, this is fair use, you know. I'm, it's my nigga, urban politics. But I, I gotta fast forward a little bit and get to the sad part because he goes through the whole shit. What Cat said. And I want to get the real ooh, the set. Oh, here we go. Boom. Said talks this shit right here. Bam. Bam. Fair Boom. use, y'all. Fair use. Fair use. Urban politics, mate. Let's go. No idea what this brother is talking about. That joke is over 30 years old, close to 30 something years old. I did a comedy in 1999. Probably have been doing that joke six, seven years before that. I don't even know if Cat was doing comedy then. So, you know, again, he a talented brother. I have no idea what he's talking about. I've never seen Cat do a, a space show joke. So, uh, you know, it be something that he believes is true. I've, I've written a lot of jokes. I've had a lot of comedians steal my jokes as well. So I understand if you feel, you know, slighted by that, but that's my joke. That's my joke, dog. Driving space shuttle to the moon, cigarette, cutie pie rocking in the background, parallel parking the space shuttle. It's my joke, dog. So that's what, that's what I believe it to be. So, all right. But I guess when he went on to Club Shay Shay, uh, that was probably like a year and some change ago, like the end of hey, nigga, 2022. Right. Said the entertainer was on there. He spoke. Well, now... Nah, Urban politics. We do not want to hear what you guys say, Jose. All right, so we got it from the from the from the motherfucking uh the horse's mouth, my nigga. You feel me? So yeah, it said said he he better had that joke, nigga, way back. You don't even know if Cat was a comedian back then. So how you feel about that, Corey? Man, I don't know Sid for stealing no jokes, man. That's all I'm saying. I don't know Sid for stealing no jokes. Said, um, said, said, been rocking the house for a long time. I just seen said do some incredible things on stage, man. I'm just speaking on it. Said done, done some incredible things on stage, man. So it's like, I'm not sure what people said ain't known as no joke thing. Look, you know, I don't know what else to say, but said ain't known as no joke thing, man. <laughs> said one of the greatest. What? Bad motherfucker. Um, when people I, call you the greatest, you know you can't really call yourself the greatest. People got to say it for you. Right. Facts. Facts. Said one of the greatest, dog. From our underground, said one of the greatest. I done seen said rock rooms that people would not be able to rock, dog. Said one of the greatest. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, we got to be real with this shit, man. All you niggas great. You great, cat great, said great. I don't even know why it's comedy beef. 
Like, where the fuck is this coming from? Like, y'all rappers or something. Like, y'all niggas, like, did like drilling and killing. Like, yo, it's competition. So is that the real, like, name of it is this competition or niggas is some real sucker, sucker MCs? Like, what is it, bro? And it's always um, depends on who it is with everything. It's some guys who reassured because all they need is the mic in their hand, then magic happened. It's some guys who, for whatever reason, magic don't always happen. Wow. <laughs> like, man, all right, so he had an off night. You also you almost make excuses for him because you like wow. him. At what? I'm saying, Cedric the Entertainer, no, man, no, that Cedric the Entertainer. Man, go watch you. I I pay to go see Cedric the Entertainer, and I'm a stand up comedy. I just pay the no. money. Tonight, tonight, no. nigga, I'm going to nigga. No Frank Ocean. I'm I'm, I'm pulling up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Sid, get yeah. down, my nigga. No disrespect. I don't know what that one joke was, but Sid got a million jokes beyond that one joke, nigga. That May said who he is. Nigga, I seen this shit. He said he didn't have nothing on Netflix. I seen the one on Netflix when the nigga came with the marching band on the intro. I ain't never seen the, the, the a comedian come with the marching band. He dancing on stage with the motherfucking dancers and shit. He intro, only you. You the only one. When I went to that one with you at the sofa, you came out and you did y'all thing, y'all singing, y'all dancing. That's the only person I ever seen in comedy do the same shit that said did. Said came out with that marching band. I don't know what the fuck horns and shit coming down and it's going down. So that alone is different from the fucking joke. I'm just saying. What you guys you say know, about that's it? That's what I'm saying. It's like you saying what you seen. I ain't we ain't coaching you to say that. You just saying what's real. I'm telling you, man. Said the entertainer worth the ticket, man. And I all I'm saying, like, I don't know nothing about no no joke. I don't know about one joke, but I'm here to tell you, these people don't want it with me because I know everybody who do everybody joke. I want everybody to listen to that who got something to say about this. I know all the guys who do other people jokes, and I can have a whole bunch of comics back me up. On what I'm saying, we know the guys who do other people jokes. Corey, man, you know that you ever seen somebody hit the mic like they hitting somebody? Yeah, that's JB Smooth joke, man. They all stole it and ran with it. So when they hit the mic on their head and shit and hit it on their leg or whatever, that's JB Smooth. No, not hit it on their head. They do something where they hit the mic where it make that sound like yeah, like that, ahead, man. that that noise, okay. yeah. That's JB Smooth joke, and I dare somebody to challenge me on it. That's JB Smooth. I'm telling you, JB Smooth used to be one of the strongest black comics in the underground, man. And a lot of people yeah. ran with his stuff because he on the other side. No, nah, they, they, they put him with Kevin Hart. He on uh, Hollywood, uh, Husbands of Hollywood. Yeah, that's what I heard. That's what I'm saying. It's like, but the underground, the people who get a lot of, oh, they funny, points. Hey, man, yeah. a lot of y'all went and pieced up J.B. Smooth jokes, man, and you know I know. I dare somebody to challenge me on facts. On I'm facts. Gonna I'm going to tell you where they took a lot of shit from, too. Tommy Davidson. They don't give that man his, his props. And they, they they ride with his shit like, it, like he's dead. I'm sorry. Tommy Davidson, a fool, boy. Tommy Davidson, he used to be on Kings of Comedy? Yeah, Tommy Davidson. Yeah, he was. He was. You're absolutely right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that one. Yeah, they, nah, he was on it. He was like an opener. He was like the first beginning of the shit. That's right. They narrowed it down to that final four, which was Steve, D.L., Sid, and Bernie Mac. Bernie yeah. Mac. You did? Mac. So that's what's up with that, man. But I'm saying, man, none of them dudes don't want to get into it with me about who steal jokes and whoop de woo because all, man, a lot of these cats... Man, you know you don't want your business out there. And on top of that, in California, that somebody was telling me about the stuff they can sue people for. Some of these guys got violent histories with smaller people. <laughs> you don't want it with Corey Oakham. 
You don't want it. <laughs> I I know who you guys really are. Some of these dudes are maniacs, man. Some of these dudes are maniacs to the weak, not to somebody that they know finna who ready to go to war with them. But I'm saying like these, it's some predators in this game, man. You talking about all the stuff that can be brought up, man? Motherfuckers need to just get their money and go put it somewhere where they can keep it. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> the the bitterness is going to show, man. And I'm saying, like, once you get on the spotlight like that, people going to start showing your dirt. I'm talking about dirt that can be that can be um, proven. So right. I'm just saying, man, motherfuckers got to watch what they say when they motherfucking talk about motherfuckers because that make motherfuckers dig up your shit. I tell yeah. motherfuckers, dig up my shit because I'm going to talk about it before you talk about it. Yeah, we were um academics was trying to do that last night. Yo, did you get to the hour twenty mark? Yeah, let me uh yeah, yeah, let me get back up in the building. Yeah, I think I know Corey gotta go, but this is this is a very good part of the um interview. I know Corey didn't see this one. And let's see how you feel about this at the hour twenty mark. But we it's a, I only got the thirty minute mark. Oh, okay. You don't have the whole thing. I got the whole. I got the whole shit. I could go to the hour twenty. Yeah, I want to. I want to see what guys say about this. Is Cat Williams un unbelievable? I think this okay. So you said go to the one twenty mark. Yes, sir. Okay, let me. Oh, hold on. One twenties, okay. Boom, one twenty. There we go. You want fair me to use, fair mark? use? Fair use. One twenty mark. Let's go. One of America's great. Ah, nigga, it started from the beginning. They making it hard for you to get their stuff. Oh, Here man. we go. When you try to when you try to put that stuff out there, you get swallowed. So one of the most important <laughs> things to me, if anything, on the two bus is I, I stop. And they go maybe play. They see the whole shit. They want you to play the, the no, not the commercial. That's yeah. there we go right here. Uh oh, it froze. Nah, my bad. Prior to. <clears throat> me getting this first audition for Friday after next. I got this baby son. I'm holding him up above me. He grabs my little chain. He's playing with it and he accidentally drops it. It breaks out my front two teeth. I'm in a situation now where when I go to the dentist, they telling me this going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars to fix this right. They are not telling me what it's going to look like. I go get an estimate with no money involved, find out what I need to do. They find out you got a tumor in your upper jaw, so we're going to have to do a whole surgery for you. It's going to be 100 bands. I don't have it. I don't have it. And um, I'm only going to have this check from this movie. So while I'm doing this movie, we live in this trailer. Um, that's where we live. So when they come to work at five in the morning, we already there. When they leave at night, we still there. We just double back um, because we understood that this is our one opportunity. Um, and we have this opportunity to change our lives. Just like a young man going for the draft. Right. We can actually get in the league with this. There are 30 comedians on this cast. They're all magnificent. This is the holy grail of the situation. Um, so yeah, I was able to make sure that because it wasn't just my first movie, it was KD Albert's first movie. It was Terry Crews' first movie. Absolutely. I was the leader of this group, which meant that we did we didn't do their rehearsals. They did rehearsal. We did our own rehearsals daily to make sure that we were at the level of professional actors, which is what made it so egregious, that guy. Say, I was supposed to, you were supposed to what? Candy did have a good part in the movie, man. The Santa Claus was funny, man. 
The dude said the entire time we were filming, I can't play this role. They got a bandana over my nose and my mouth. My family not even gonna know who this is. <laughs> so yeah, tell your story. <laughs> <laughs> He's Ted. Uh, Ted Cruz also said that you guys had a lot of had a lot of conversation that this was your opportunity and you needed to seize this moment. Terry had the benefit of having been in some very high profile situations already and took L's. Mm -hmm. Like he had been in the league. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He 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 had um done pro wrestling. He had done a lot of things. He had been televised and some things that hadn't worked. Right. And this was just fortuitous for him. And now you know what nobody has ever said in the whole industry in 20 years about, you know, the whole money might not get raped in the bathroom. Right. So I understood going in that there's no reason. I lost every, for a five-year period, every single movie that Kevin Hart did was a movie that had been on my desk that all I had said was just, can we take some of this step and fetch it shit out? And then I can do it like it don't need to be overtly homosexual because I'm not homosexual. Right. It doesn't need that right. to be funny. Right. Mm -hmm. And and me saying that and them going, oh, yeah, no problem. And then going to give it to this other guy and having him do it just like it was and acting like I'm a bad person because I keep standing on my standard. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh, I think that's what you wanted to get across. Right. Him standing on the standard. Right. Then he um he went into like a Faison thing and saying that Faison I, I don't like Yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. I, my bad, my bad. Let's keep going. I thought you was going there because you know uh uh our brother Corey Holcomb and us, we don't fuck with no backdoor of your shit. So I, he he is playing the backdoor of your shit, but okay, let's keep it going. <laughs> It's interesting, but I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Like again, I'm I'm on the winning side of these <laughs> decisions. You know, look, I've had Cube, I've talked to Cube, and a lot of people say Cube don't doesn't pay. What's your relationship with Cube and what did that opportunity mean for you? Oh shit. Well, the ungrateful bastards that would say anything about Cube's payment. You shouldn't even talk to them anymore. Like you don't, you don't go to Goodwill. You don't go to a Goodwill thrift store and go look at all this cheap ass shit. <laughs> Why don't you shut up? Why don't you shut up? You could have went to Hermes. Why you didn't go to Balenciaga? Why you didn't get a vote of the ball main? You want to have that conversation? Right. What you mean, the independent black dude who's filming it partly out of his fucking pocket? What you mean he didn't pay you enough? They weirdos weirdos that felt like they earned the opportunity because they were big no no yeah. i understood that ain't no 200 million dollar movie well i mean how much did you expect you was gonna make well i made enough to get them teeth fixed just like you did yeah. so, <laughs> so i <laughs> it was no harm no foul i knew that i was gonna go from there and there was no there was no turning back for cat williams so. well here's the thing um I wrote it. What I'm saying, I'm saying, if I did it and I did a good job at it, you can thank me. I was involved. Right. I'm not gonna come later on and tell you I never even read the whole script. So how you know what rose? What? What do you mean you never read? The <laughs> like, you, like these guys' whole job is to present something. Unfortunately, and I'm just not a presenter. If you ask me a question, I'm just going to tell you the truth of how it went. Would you be willing to do another Friday? Here we go. Hi, Frank George here. This is the hey, my massager. hey, boy, you talk about getting to it. You should have said hour and 45. This is electric. <laughs> it's right here, right here. Let me let this shit muscle back. stimulation. It's low frequency treatment. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> You've already asked me to write it. I was supposed to have been writing it. That's this is what these guys are mad about. Like we lost some great people before this movie. Mm -hmm. 
could come out regardless. Right. And so, yes, there desperately needs to be one. Um, um, but um, we miss John Witherspoon in a way that can't really be quantified, right. if I'm being honest with you. And um, the Chris Tucker that we got now is Epstein Island Chris Tucker, oh, oh. not Smokey. Oh, Lord. Oh, shit. Whew. <laughs> if I didn't know no better, I'd tell you he's the greatest. I don't care what you say. <laughs> 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 to be confident and not delusional is a real skill. Most right. of these confident people we see is really. All right, so fair use, man. Like, that shit went way beyond listening purpose, my nigga. Let, let's get Corey in this motherfucker, man. What you gotta say about that, Corey, man? And what, no, no, Goose, what you gotta say? I'm gonna put you on the screen because what was your landing point on that one? Well, I thought it, it, it was a, it was somewhere right in that 120 mark where um he was just, you know, saying negative things, but why doesn't he concentrate more on the positive things of, you know, brothers coming together and making good movies? Yeah, you know, Cube at the time didn't have a lot of money to pay people. But he put people on. It's because of Q. A lot of those dudes have careers now. Facts. You know that's you know that's what needs to be said. You know I mean um, sometimes I think we need to po you know concentrate more on the positive than the negative. That's you know that's why I was about to you know get in. That's the land the plane. Okay. Yeah. Corey, what you got? What you got to say about this? Corey. Corey, run it through the, the Corey, Mr. Holcomb. Take your mute off, Corey. His mute is on, nigga. He ain't got no mute on. That nigga wiggling through some shit. Corey. All right, we'll, we'll bring Corey back in when uh, he's ready to go. All right. Uh, at the end of the day, man, um, I think comedians don't need to be beefing. Like, what the fuck is this? You know, and I, 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 you know, I know it's a competition, man. Everybody run your bag up, cool. But um, the shit that Shaq did, like the, like the comedy shows and shit that Shaq did, the, the shit that Russell Simmons did, the Deaf Comedy Jam with, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. with motherfucking Martin Lawrence being the host and Kid Capri. Let's get back to that, man. All this like niggas beefing and shit over dumbass, stupid shit, man. Like all them comedians was on Def Comedy Jam, my nigga. Everybody, Corey Holcomb with the fucked up two, nigga. We seen everybody in they beginning. We seen motherfucking uh, we seen uh uh uh, uh Dave Chappelle with the fucked up motherfucking Afro little wop shit on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like we seen everybody in a purest form. We seen mother everybody. We seen Mar Lawrence every night in the fucked up mm -hmm. motherfucking outfits he had on trying to dance like we seen everybody in their fucking purest form nigga the beginning of all the comedians nigga period so hey come on bro like like niggas take it to that because everybody complain about rap like y'all niggas need to unify y'all make a label and once a nigga try to make a label they they hit you with the feds nigga when 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 uh when uh Shug knight Shay prince and irv Gotti try to make the first black distribution company they hit them with the feds. Everybody started going to jail and shit. So boom, y'all comedian niggas, I ain't got that attention. That's why Kevin Hart able to do what he do and make multi-millions. That's why all the other comedians, like, let's take it back to the beginning, to where the, where the Wayne brothers, they had a whole fucking show in Living Color. Yeah. A whole program on national television with all the best comedians, everybody eating. So... Not not to like, you know, have a Kanye rant. I done got Corey off the Corey and left. My bag, my nigga. But I think mm -hmm. we need to get back to the Wayne days. You know what I mean? To the Robert Townsend days. When Robert Townsend had all the comedians doing movies and shit together. All this beef shit is many, man. It remind me of some rap shit, my nigga. Period. Let's let's tap Corey back in. Corey, I just landed on I just landed on some shit like uh, why it ain't on some Robert Townsend, you know what I mean? Uh the Wayne brothers shit, like when niggas had, you know what I mean, uh in living color, when 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 uh when 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 Robert Townsend had all the top comedians on his shows and 
that shows the movies and shit. Like, why niggas ain't coming together like that? Why, why y'all niggas like rappers right now? Y'all beefing about intellectual properties and who's the top, who's not the top, who's this and that. Why it ain't on no Robert Thompson, Damian Wayne shit? And I hate to say it took a, 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 a movie nigga like Nick Cannon to really take it to some wild and out shit. But why the comedians ain't doing like what, what Damon Wayans did and what Robert Townsend did? Okay, well, if you asking me, I want you to understand this. Hollywood picks our talent that will be showcased on their air. There was a time in America where they were talent scouts. And see, talented people are not afraid to have other talented people around them. But here's the truth. A lot of the talent that get exposure are worried about you seeing that guy who really is talented because they worried about their shine being taken. So if you got a whole bunch of people that was chose by Hollywood, you ain't get the, you ain't got the people that was chose by talent in there. So there's going to be disparity and things like that because the people who were chose by Hollywood don't want you to see the people that was chose by the streets as the best. Facts. Facts. This, the internet, but, see the but, social media, what we're seeing today is people who are popular on the internet. We're not seeing talented people. You ain't seeing and, the best of the talent because everybody right. out who really raw business, they ain't popping. Right. Man, I don't want to sound bitter, but a lot of the people who getting the opportunities are the people willing to go through the humiliation rituals and to be swallowed and all that <laughs> stuff like that. Log off. <laughs> log off. Oh. <laughs> who log off, man? Nah, that's what he said. He said log off. But at the end of it, I'm saying like, McCoy, McCoy, you, you as an individual, I seen you do it. I seen you put comedians on. You know what I mean? I seen other individuals like Cat Williams take comedians on tour. I seen other comedians like Kevin Hart take comedians on tour. Like, like help other comedians. Like, why it can't be? Like, why would it take a nigga like Shaq to do the comedy jam? Like, why ain't a comedian comedy jam? Like, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, the comedians, like, Robert Townsend and and, and, and the Wayans, they took a nigga, they discovered motherfucking uh, the boy that, that played the mask, a white boy. He was discovered on a black boy national televised on NBC, ABC, whatever it was, like, on some Bill Cosby shit, a black living color with everybody, hip-hop, rap. You know what I mean? Niggas break dancing, uh, fucking uh, J Lo. Everybody was discovered there. Like y'all got that type of magic and power. Why the fuck is not being done now? That's what I want to ask. I don't want to ask like why y'all beefing. I want to ask why y'all not doing the powerful shit that Damon Wayans and and Robert Townsend was doing back in the day, far as comedians. Well, you know, I got a show. It's called the Fifty One Fifty Show, and. I like when talent comes on. I When I'm on the road and I work with other comedians, I like the strongest comedians to work with me because I measure myself up against the best. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't, I can't say nothing but something that's going to make people not like me, but I'm good with that too. Um, there's not a lot of people who want talent around them. They want the people they pick. They want them to blow up so they can still shine. But like around this underground in America, there are some talented people where if the world saw them, a lot of guys that's getting played now, they would not look good against some of the talent out here. It's just, if you really got a bad bitch, I mean, this is going to be a great example. If you really got a bad bitch, all she got to do is walk in the room and the other bitches know their opportunity is limited. You have to believe that. A bad bitch shut shit down. So if you got yeah. 
real talented comics at a venue that's intimidating to the comics that was chosen by the industry. But why wasn't it like that when they had Deaf Comedy Jam? Like they like okay, we they started off with Mar Lawrence and then they switched the whole spot. Everybody was up there. You had Tory uh what what's the nigga name? Tory Rock. You had Tony Rock up there. You had motherfucking your nigga Steve Harvey up there. Everybody was hosting that shit. You had my nigga uh from, from Players Club. What's my nigga name from Players Club? Tory. Not Tory, nigga, the, the one the main nigga, uh, Be Bill Bellamy. You had him hosting the shit. So why isn't it like that? Like it was a conglomerate, my nigga, a comedy conglomerate where everybody blew the fuck up. Like you gotta have nigga like uh what they doing over there with, with what y'all went to with the roast, the roast shit where y'all did in the classroom and shit. You know what I mean? All deaf digital. Why no fucking comedians like, come on, man, like y'all got the lane. Like y'all could y'all could huddle up like a football team and say, bro, we gonna conquer this shit. We're going to divvy it up, nigga. We're going to do this season with this many comedians, the next season with that many comedians, this season with that many comedians, and we all going to be like the motherfucking union of this comedian shit, and we running this shit, nigga, period, on some old content shit, as far as what you do to Netflix. Y'all come as a conglomerate. Niggas solo, uh, 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 fucking Dave Chappelle, fucking uh, Cat Williams, all the solo shit is like eight figures. You know what I mean? Eight figures. So if y'all come together, that's gonna be some nine-figure shit, right? But what right? about what about the people who don't want you to see their boyfriend, so they gotta keep their distance from? That ain't got nothing to do with business, my nigga. Whatever, whatever a nigga do in his bedroom, that's his business. What that fuck that gotta do with comedy? Hold on, Shaq, hold on, hold on. Shaq, you was me, I'm hold, on, hold on, nigga. Let me land. <laughs> Shaq was the biggest trick in LA, nigga. And what did that have to do with him doing them comedy shows y'all did? Nothing. Nothing, yeah. nothing, nothing, nothing. That's Stop. his personal business, right? Y'all never said, hey, Shaq, you got a little dick. That's a rumor around LA. He got, come on, man. Shaq, you got, come on, that's his business. No Frank Ocean. So this is what right? I'm saying. Like you asked me, I did the Shaq All-Star Comedy Jam. And if you ask me, I did the rawest set ever at the yeah. All Star Jam. Why you think? Why you think Shaq All Star Comedy Jam don't got nothing to do with Corey Oak? Too raw, and they can't control you. Man, when I did the Shaq All Star Jam, man, they gave me six thousand dollars. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let me get it to you. You asking me, let me get it to you. <laughs> so, they wanted me to do something else. What you think I said? Motherfucker, we ain't finna do no $6,000 shit. <laughs> Them nah, motherfuckers yeah. was like, fuck that nigga. And I, dog, I'm telling you, man, the, 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 the people, it ain't just Shaq. It ain't just Shaq. Shaq just got his name on it and a little something to do with it. It's other people in that that realize Corey is not willing to be part of what we need him to be part of. So we got to act like Corey Holcomb don't exist because he's not going to do that again. Yeah, we got him to do it for $6,000. It was worth it because the whole nation saw I was better than a lot of people. Right. But I'm not going to do it again for $6,000. No. They look, they got the Shaq All-Star game thing at the Super Bowl this year. Dog, they ain't got no heavy hitters on that motherfucker. They ain't got no motherfuckers who finna bring the house down. Me and Gooch, I told Gooch I might want to do a show Super Bowl weekend because yeah. I know if I do a show Super Bowl weekend, everybody who know about comedy gonna be like, this the funny show. Right. I wanted to book some comics and I just hosted and I was going to book all funny comics, but yuck ass why it don't never be, man, let me tell you something, man. They don't want the cream to rise to the top. So well, you gotta, you gotta look, we all out here on our own. You know how hard that is to do it all solo by yourself, right? Yeah. Facts. Facts. So that's, that's what we own out here. 
Mother would rather not have it than let the cream rise to the top. That shat shit is full of fuckery. It's a one of your bay, one of your bay, your fellow people from the bay. I can't say the I can't say the name for real, but I'm gonna say this. <laughs> Don't do that, man. Hey man, that hey. bitch determined to make sure I ain't plugged with a lot of motherfuckers because the bitch try to give me some power of attorney paperwork. What you think I told the hoe? It's all about control. And they ain't nothing but the niggas. So by the time you get to the you get to the real big boys, Mr. Feinstein them, Tim, uh, 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 only gonna act like she got paperwork on you. They gonna pay her off. That's how she get her money. Well, I got, he was fool enough to sign these uh, power of attorney papers. Gooch. I'm right here, I know. Yo, cousin. What are you in charge of? Laugh factor. No, nah, he in charge more than that, boy. Well, well, yeah, but yeah, he's he's either, he's a gatekeeper. You know, he tried to give me some power of attorney paperwork. You didn't tell me that one. Man, look, goose, because it's your cousin. I ain't want you to be like I'm shitting on him, but on everything I love, that's what he did. So Yuck's in here talk about let's be united, homie. Everybody is cutthroat in life. We don't help our brother. We hold our brothers down. I mean, hold our brothers back. So right. you say the kumbaya thing, um, um, uh, yuck, trust me. Who out here finna kumbaya with you? Everybody want to call you and tell you, this is the average comic. Yeah, man, this dude, he got a show. He want to book you. And um, you know what I'm saying? It's my show, but um, uh, <laughs> how much you charge? I'll be like, what? I don't want to talk to you if some dude want to book me for a show. You could give me his number or have him call me. Oh, no, no, no. You just go through me and tell me. I'm, I'm like, man, I ain't talking to you about nothing. I know you out here living with your bitch. <laughs> but look, look, look. But look, Corey. I mean, <laughs> all jokes aside, my nigga, I'll, I'll let you do your Kanye rant, and you absolutely right. But let me ask you a question, because I've seen it. I've seen you do it. I seen you do it with your podcast. I seen you do it with your shows. I was there at the at the sofa when you did it with your crew. You had singing. You had all types of scripts and shit going down. Whoever like you put on that was some Robert Townsend type of shit. Like on some right. on my mama, my nigga. I witnessed it. I'm like, that's what need to go down. But why you can't do that with your fellow comedians? Why niggas can't just bust down the bag like, hey yo man, we go the new kings of comedy. And y'all putting on the niggas, y'all put on everybody got the crew that just like you put on at the sofa, you had your little crew. The other niggas got their little crew, they open for y'all. And y'all four or five acts in at the end, and y'all divvy that bitch down. And y'all do book these big ass motherfucking arenas that you know what I mean? These big ass stadiums, these baseball, basketball arenas and shit, and these big ass uh whatever, and y'all bust that bitch down. Y'all got that type of influence. How the fuck did Damon? Wayne's do it and y'all can't do it. I don't give a fuck about the attitude. You think them niggas like each other? Niggas was beefing on the living color set, but they was getting a check and they all, it's just like the motherfucking NBA. You know when niggas played the best? That motherfucking tournament in Vegas because they was getting a check, right? We seen the Lakers play the best they ever played. Now they bought, they stinking up the court because it was a fucking check. So your comedians probably stinking up the motherfucking stage. But when that check come involved, nigga, they're going to be at their most supreme excellent, nigga. I'm just trying to say, period. Well, you got to be at your excellent to get the money. You, you can't turn ah, breaking the ball nigga, off. I mean, you missing the play. Let me, let, me give, let me throw another example. Jay-Z, Dame Dash, and Biggs. Them three niggas came together and made Rockefeller. What did they also make? The only rap billionaires, nigga. Jay-Z, Kanye, Rihanna. And that came from niggas coming together. Like, let's stop the bullshit. We got examples where niggas coming together make cheddar. But at the end of the day, niggas broke up. We seen that happen too. But they already made their money by then, my nigga. 
Right. Period. So, and so, so if, if you let me say this, like the guys I had with me at that show you saw at the YouTube Theater, it was the first show ever at the YouTube Theater, and I'm proud of it out there at, by the football stadium. No. You saw them two dudes I brought on stage with me. It was my time. I had 26 minutes to try to do my thing. And I shared my time with two guys. Am I right? Absolutely. Hey, man, you got the one dope fiend motherfucker can't stand my ass because I told him he can't come on my show because he grabbing women. Well, I could have got sued. Then you got the other little homie. We ain't got no hate for each other, but... He, he was too ambitious. He thought I wasn't doing him right. So I'm saying all this to give you an example. Homie, you, when it comes to collabing with people, it's not that many people you can collaborate with because everybody wants yours, not theirs. Mm, say that shit again. Wow. They, want, they want what you got. They'll come to you. It'll be somebody... You introduce them to your audience and help them learn how to be independent as an artist and everything. Next thing you know, you getting phone calls from them. Hey, man, I heard you said this about me. <laughs> hey, man, somebody told me that I'm your sidekick and I don't, I don't want to look like no sidekick. Hey, man, look, this world is cold, man. That's why I be by myself most of the time, man. And once in a while, you meet some people you could collaborate with. But most of the time, you're dealing with somebody who wants something for nothing and they want yours and not theirs. It's a it's a it's a it's a famous entertainer from Chicago named Lil Lewis. He set up a festival to help artists learn how to read contracts and sign what makes sense. He said it was the biggest waste of money he ever blew in his life. All that collaborate, collaborate and all like that, we want it to happen. But how many men do you know you can collaborate with and they won't start falling apart before the lick even come in for real? Well, it's rare. No, nah, that shit that shit is rare as a, as a motherfucking uh, a million dollar bill. That shit is rare. So you're absolutely right. But we've seen it being done, my nigga. Niggas got to put down their egos. By who? All y'all niggas. No, I'm saying, like, where have you seen a collaboration come together where uh, they I said in Living Color. In Living Color had hip-hop, DJs, dancers, comedians, skits, the whole shit. Everybody that we know in the game right now from motherfucking... Uh, from from fucking uh uh, uh the, our nigga that was on 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 tone by Tyrone, what what's my nigga name? That was in a coma. Who that? The in nigga that played Mike. The nigga who? who? Anyway, nigga the nigga in living color that played Mike Tyson and played Sharif. The nigga all them little female roles and shit. Jamie the nigga Fox? that sing with with Kanye. Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx came from in, Liv in Living Color. All them niggas came from in Living Color, period. And it was a collective, white, black, everybody. Just like Saturday Night Live with, with, with Eddie Murphy and all them people. Like they had collectives, but we ain't a part of Saturday Night Live. But how well, they had the collective, we got to have our own collective, the, all that stuff the only collective we got is Wildin' Out. I got to salute Nick Cannon. He brought y'all niggas together. Can I can I can we agree on that? Man, fuck that shit. I don't care what <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was gonna trick my nigga, man. Do your shit, bro. <laughs> I, I forever salute Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon gave me an opportunity to be on his show. But if it's up to the people up there at MTV, I'll work for years and won't make a dime. If the if the 85 South boys, Corey Holcomb, and almost everybody who did Wild and Out get together and talk about the money, it'll be embarrassing. But I'm not embarrassed. I never made no money with Wild and Out. I made nickels and dimes. And it's set up to be that way. You can ask the 85 South boys once they break away from that crippleness that come with the Wild and Out. 
they ain't made no money with wilding out, man. Wilding out is that I'm not Tahari, Tahari P. Henson. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not knocking the sister for having a breakdown. I'm not gonna cry. I use wilding out so I can go get some money. But Nick Cannon ain't paid me no money. I say that I love Nick Cannon. I ain't made no money on wilding out. Motherfucker wilding out. I got love for the man for putting me on and letting the world see me. But after the world saw me, I got ghosts. Not because, I, I mean, I probably would have did a couple of more seasons, but they started weeding me out because, you know, the longer you be on a show, they got to pay you more. Yep. So as season four or whatever came, man, them motherfuckers started telling me some sucker shit. So I'm not mad at Wildin' Out. But nowadays, Wildin' Out can't, man, fuck motherfucker Wildin' Out. Motherfucker, <laughs> you got some money? It costs money to book Corey Holcomb. I've been out here scraping from the motherfucking bottom. And you think I'm finna come do that shit for a couple of thousand dollars? Nigga, I give bitches a couple of thousand dollars. Ain't it money? That money they give you on Wild and Out, I could get from a bitch I'm fucking with. Wow. Is okay. that low? Is that low? Man, lower than that. If you don't believe me, see them 85 South boys, they still a little dependent on Wild and Out, but I told them it's only in your mind. You get the best out of Wild and Out. If they want you to do something, they got to pay you like you are part of the show. You ain't got to take the nickels and dimes. They try to split them up. And I might, right. get in, I might get in trouble for saying this. They try to split the 85 South boys up. Well, we'll just get these two and won't use the other. Uh, well, whatever, whatever, whatever. Man, all this stuff is a divide and conquer. These people read that book. What's the name of that book? Laws of Power. A lot. Have you ever read that book yet? 48 Laws of Power. I know all the laws. 48 Laws of Power. I know all the laws. I put it on mute so you can talk your shit, but that's a deceiving ass book. Period. So if you know whatever, the whatever laws, comes with that book, that's the only reason I understand Hollywood. They yo, job. Yo, let me, let me tell you one of the laws. Let me tell you one of the laws. Let everybody do the work and you take credit for it. Thank you. What 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 is wild wilding out? Everybody did the work and Nick Cannon take credit for it. No disrespect to Nick, but that's what happened, right? No, Nick Cannon don't just take credit for it. Nick Cannon and them boys with him, the Feinsteins. You know what I'm talking about? Them boys. They get the money. Oh, they wow. get the money. Everybody else get enough money to come back. To come back. We'll, we'll pay you enough money to buy you a ticket to come back. So it's like a walkthrough. Like a nigga get like 3000 for a walkthrough or something. It's like it's like a walkthrough. 3000 You ain't getting 3000 <laughs> out. You was getting scale. About 900 something dollars. Let me tell you something since we was talking about Cat Williams. One day Cat Williams came on Wildin' Out after he made it. He made it rain in the place. You did? Right. You hit I remember that. I remember. He threw hundreds in the air, homie, like a bitch. I grabbed about 800 off the ground. <laughs> I might as well have had on a tutu, nigga. But oh, man. That $800 I grabbed off the ground? Yeah. Cat don't even know it. Nigga, I was in the hole. Nigga, I needed that 800 <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, so I'm gonna ask you, I'm asking you a question. Was that 800 more than you made on the set that day? Yeah, more than that day. For, yeah, for a day's work, yeah. Yeah. Wilders. Them wilding out girls made $25 a show. Damn. Me and Fly, me and Fly just got a check from the Grammys. We had to split 2500 So that was the Grammys, my nigga. We just got a check from doing the Grammys and then 25, like, yeah, 1,200, 12, 12, That's why When TV opportunities and movie opportunities come at me, I'm real picky with the shit. Man, I'm telling you, man, somebody tried to get me to do a movie in 2023. Them motherfuckers wanted to give me 
seventy thousand dollars for about three, four months work. She like nigga. That's a weekend. Let me tell you something, homie. Stop. You <laughs> if know I what never I mean. get famous, if I never get famous through Hollywood, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. Man, these people out here, they'll pay to come see me. What I look like putting all that effort into your movie for some money, that's some money to you. That ain't no money to me. I need bread. Yes, sir. Hey, 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 speaking of bread, I know how much it costs to get your motherfucking SS re whatever you did to your old school, nigga, costs way more than what you said, nigga. So I know, nigga, your habits are very expensive. So a nigga can't approach you with no sixty thousand. Your cars cost more than that, my nigga. Like, like the 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 to make the old schools cost quadruple like triple that nigga to make what you drive around in nigga comfortable for you the nerve of these motherfuckers no i'm saying like i ain't got no money man i know my um i'm, I'm going through one of them things with old girl but look i ain't got no money but i'm saying <laughs> I, I wouldn't work for what they trying to pay me I'm not gonna be like my sister, who I I, I feel her to heart to Miss Henson do it, and then she feel bad afterwards, homie. I'd rather not have it, homie. I created a Hollywood. It's called a 5150 show, man. Everybody watch it. Everybody watch it. I created a Hollywood. Hollywood one day gonna have to come to me and negotiate. How to get the show? They gonna wait right. me out, like they did Red Fox. They didn't let Red Fox get it till he was real old, right? Even though he was paying them hoes, he couldn't dig them down right because he was old. <laughs> I already know my story, man. Hollywood gonna ignore me, and, and man, look, man, I think Shannon Sharp was a, a, a great man for the way he spoke up for black people. When um he first got on, right. now Shannon Sharp is used to having money, and when I say money, I'm talking about getting that Hollywood money. Shannon Sharp ain't trying to burn his bridge like he, like he, like all that stuff he used to say. He ain't talking like that no more because he know them people will be like, "Well, Mr. Sharp, nice having you. Nice having you." He'll be hanging out with dude he was at the game with. What was the old boy name he went to the game with? Hollywood. No, he was some nigga named Dick Print. You mean wait, wait, his 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 um uh, his, his, no his, 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 his stylist. His stylist. That's what they said. He was at the game. What was his name? I think it was Dick Print. This nigga is ignorant as a motherfucker. What nigga? I'm keeping it a buck. I'm not hating. I love Shannon Sharp. I do not dislike Shannon Sharp, but I know why all them guys don't want me around them. Because I, I talk about what I see. I ain't trying to diss them. But it's funny you at the game sitting side by side with a nigga named Dick Print. Tinkerbell. I don't, I don't, I, I thought it was weird that he went to the game with his stylist. What was his name? His Hold name on. is Hollywood. But that's not. No, oh, that's his no. real. Uh, how how is the goose? You know everything. How the fuck you know this nigga name? How you know Tinkerbell name? Because he always brags about him on the show. He says if it's not for Hollywood, for Hollywood, he tells him that's all he talk about is Hollywood. Oh, why he always talk about Hollywood? Why he had the game with Hollywood? Why he ain't at the game with a bad bitch? That, like, that, 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 sit in front row. Somebody pull up the pictures of him next to dude and what I'm dude, right now. Oh my lord, man. You Hold on, give me one second. I got you. You flow seated up with the baddest bitches. You don't need your stylist there. I got a stylist. He, I got a stylist. His name is Exclusive Game, right? We did the Grammys. He did all our leather outfits. Was that nigga right there on the stage with me? Was he right there sitting next to me? No. This nigga did everybody outfit, nigga. Jermaine Dupree, nigga. Everybody outfit in that motherfucker. He did that. Rick Ross, E40, he did everybody outfit in that bitch, period. Was that was that nigga sitting next to me 
or was he on stage with me? So why the fuck you can just go pick up your shit and dip? Why do you need that nigga on the on the flow seat with you? That suspect, my nigga. Give me the screen. Give me the screen. Go down, Turbo. Let's get a boy the screen. Like, yo, peep this out. Yo, this nigga up under. No, fuck that. This nigga all up under this nigga. That's one pick. Hold on. Hold up, big swole up. <laughs> that, hey, hey, that nigga is uh, up under that nigga wing. That nigga's a wing thing. That's hey, another game. Hey, yo. Hold up, big swole up. Hold on. Hold on. Why are you? The games you the games you fought, you bring a badass bitch to the game. Ah, come on, go. bro. What are we doing here? This is one of that's the game where he got in the fight with John Morant, uh father. <laughs> that, that's the one. <laughs> hey, bro. Okay. That's a nigga date, my nigga. I'm sorry. Yeah, he, said, he said he paid uh he Allegedly. paid three hundred thousand for his uh Allegedly. He paid three hundred thousand for his floor seats. To bring a nigga. Hey man. Hey, 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 Gooch. Yeah. Now you saw them pictures. We ain't we from the motherfucking streets. We ain't gotta say we know what it is. We know what it is. I know why Hollywood don't want me up under them, and I don't think that's fair. I don't care who you getting down with, man. But if I make a joke about it, man, why I got to be evil? Facts. Everybody, you see that joke? everybody made jokes about all that shit. Period. Oh, you want to get, get uh, give you the screen back? Hold on, hold on, Gooch. Do it again. That's kind of close, my nigga. They legs are touching. Nigga, and shoulders, and arms, and elbows. Shoulders, legs, knees, and toes. All that shit touching. Yeah, man. Hey, man. man. You know, know what it is, man. I was one of the first ones to call it out because I used to watch how my man talking and everything. I'd be like, boy, that boy got something on. That boy got something. It's something with that boy. I got love for him, but I'm seeing it. Look, he was around Skip. And we already know Skip. Skip, I know Skip saw Shannon and was like, oh my stars. He he went to bat for the get then, yeah, he went to bat for Shannon to be on the show, right? Oh no, man. You telling me Skip got a whole wife. You telling me Skip got a Skip is with the with the bullshit? What? <laughs> hey man, look, man, let me tell you something, man. This this gotta be got to come to an understanding in America, man. Some of these guys like to get rotted out. You dig? And that's yeah. why niggas is in position. That's why the whole ESPN staff got fired. But Skip, how he stayed in position with his old uh, uh, Crip, Crip keep uh, ass? Skip, they been got rid of Skip. Skip went to fuck. You mean Stephen A. Smith? I mean, no. I'm talking about Skip. They got rid of wherever he was at Fox. They got rid of all them niggas there and kept Skip. Am I lying? No, no, no. It's, it's Skip been, show. They been got rid of Skip on ESPN. Yeah. Skip to Fox, and when he went to Fox, that's when he put Shannon Sharp on. And I'm glad no. he put Shannon Sharp on because Shannon Sharp got something to say. But nowadays, I'm telling you, Shannon Sharp has become a company man a little bit because he doesn't want to lose that limelight. If you're going to do right, you're going to lose the limelight. They're not going to have you in there. If you They're going to make him the next Michael Strahan. That's how they're trying to move Shannon up the ladder, to be the next Michael Strahan. Right. I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Shannon got charisma and everything he talented but here's the thing i know shannon know i peeped him and i just want to say if shannon see this man i don't care about you and dick print homie you and dick print y'all can motherfucking fuck them sheets up at the motherfucking area <laughs> but i'm just saying this this jokes i make man it ain't stop getting so sensitive man we crack jokes. You've been in the locker room. You already know how important it is to have somebody like me in the locker room. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what the fuck, man? <laughs> oh, I got another picture. I got one more. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, man. Go good. The investigator. Hold up, big. Yo. Slow down, Turbo. Yo, look how the net. No, look how this man's is sitting, though. The, the, look how the stylist is sitting. Hold on, let me give it to you. No, no, Frank Ocean, man. Don't say that ever again. <laughs> yeah, man. So we know what that man. is. We know what that is. Hey, and I'm man. So hey. I'll go back to what Yuck was saying. Yuck, if I get down like I get down, then people ain't going to want me around because they don't want to see the motherfucking brown being exposed. I think I think it's the same with um the the rap niggas and, and the uh, industry niggas. I think them niggas done climbed through some uh um you know jump through some motherfucking uh, rainbow holes. You know it's it's usually fire holes. You know what I mean? Jump through fire hoops. Niggas done jump through some rainbow hoops to be who they are. I don't give a fuck. And then it's like a whole clique of them like that be together. Like you like Cat Williams said, it it's a clique. It's a click of them niggas that be together and they all fucking successful. And I don't know what they did, but they all successful. And then now niggas is getting taken down. So the, the question I got to ask both my brothers, man, once a black man become a billionaire, do you think they're coming for you to take you down? No matter what you do in your rituals, do you think the ritual shit is going to be revealed after you go against the grain or, you know what I mean? Because a lot of yeah. niggas been taken out that had money, you know? You want to go first? You want me to go first, Corn? I, I don't care. I'll go first. I'll tell uh, you like this. If you a black billionaire in America, you a, it's a target on your back. You're going to conform. You're going to do their humiliation rituals. You're going to do something that will make them comfortable enough to allow you to keep that money. Facts. I agree. Gooch, what you got to say? I'll, I'll add something to it. Now, in order for you to get this money, we have to have something on you. So if you ever think you're going to go go renegade by yourself and start talking, uh, 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 remember this time on the island? Oh, remember this time? Keep your mouth shut. So it's, it's, a, it's a game, man. It's a game. Just like when they were saying um, people that work for uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, man, I almost said his name, that they check you in a rehab. Then they make you say, hey, do me a favor, go in the room, go in Old Grove purse and pull some money out and bring it to me. Now they have it on tape. So if you ever try to go against the grain, they can say, hey, well, he was in rehab. We, we still let him have his job. Look, we have him on film going in the purse, grabbing money. Hey, go stop the bullshit. That ain't the ritual. <laughs> the ritual is the mother shit. No, but what I'm no, no. I, I gave it to you on the big scale <laughs> and the small scale. On hey, the small yo. scale, they gotta have I, something yo, on yo, you. Yo, 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 yo. I know niggas as masons, and they gotta reveal all they shit that they ever did. You know what I mean? The shit, and they married. So the shit that could fuck their marriage up, they gotta reveal all that shit. Period. So they got some dirt on you. I don't know what the other dirt is as far as the Illuminati, but as far as the Mason, they know everything about you, nigga. Period, nigga. And if they if you go against the grain, they're gonna reveal it and you know what I mean? Unseal it. Period. Hey, don't know what you said. Yeah. Hey, 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 yeah, can you hear me? Yep, we right here. I gotta ask you and Gucci a question if I may. Can I just ask y'all a question? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay, if you're an entertainer and you are flying around, your hairstylist, who is a flamboyant gay dude, does that mean y'all just have a professional relationship? Or do you know if a man is flying another man around that's flamboyantly gay, they doing shit? Am I, do, what do you think? Well, you don't want that energy around you. You can any you can have a bitch be your stylist. What is he doing so good that a, a, a female stylist can't do? That's what I'm saying. I, I, he, 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 he took the words out of my mouth. Period. Well, let me no tell Frank, you. No Frank Ocean. 
let me tell y'all something. A lot of these guys, they don't want you to know. They fly these niggas around with them and say, this is my hairstylist. And it might be your hairstylist too. Allegedly. But if you flying a man around who got cravings for tonsil tickling, that means you probably done got your motherfucking, you probably done tickled his tonsil. That's what I'm saying. It's like, yo, I watch what happens. I have seen men who claim that they don't get down like that. I'm like, well, why do with you everywhere you go? Why he sitting in the back being quiet, trying to act like you told him to act? I want this to be seen by certain people because I want them to know, man, I'm sitting here watching you, homie. Hey, the wildest shit is, is it, it's a culture. You know what I mean? It's a culture for niggas. Them niggas to come up. Period. It's a wild culture. I came up, like I told you, on the, on the motherfucking podcast. I'm glad I was signed to rap a lot. Real street niggas. I'm glad I was signed to CNH, real street niggas. So I never seen that side of the game. You know what I mean? Period. But I hear about it. And when you see niggas that are elevated and you hear they probably been through some shit or rock with some shit, it adds up. Like, nigga, you come on, man. Like, it only adds up because it's a thousand people, a million people that's more talented than you that need to be up there. And you are up there out of everybody. Another motherfucker out of all the talented, the multi-talented people, you right there at the top. Like, how the fuck did you get to the top and you ain't even the best out of everybody? So when once I seen that, I said, yeah, it's a play. It's a monopoly. It's a whole strategy. It's a, like... Come on, man. If motherfuckers control the media, if motherfuckers control the record labels, the entertainment game, the, the fucking uh, sports game, all this shit, if they want you to elevate, they can activate all that shit. You on this, you on that, you on this, on that, boom, you the hottest motherfucker ever. They could play that song a thousand times on the radio that could be bunk and make you learn that bitch because it plays some, it's, it's, it's programming. Like They can make anybody a star they want to make a star. Boom, sexy red programming. Play yeah. that shit a thousand times now. Bitches talking about they pussy red and they booty hole brown. So boom, programming. They play that shit a thousand times. I ain't never heard it, and I know what the lyric is. So at the end of the day, they program the music. Go ahead. Something else. Something else that you 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 probably need to put in there. You can get used to garbage ass programming, man. Netflix got some good movies. But I'm talking about them comedy specials. I can't believe that we have been programmed to think these are the elites of the comedy game. I cannot believe that they they pulled it off. They pulled it off. I'm like, motherfuckers is acting like this is the shit that people are supposed to be watching. Do you know it's so many comedians? It's about, I can name about 20 comedians that can go on stage and for a whole hour, have you laughing the whole hour? No. Lord, can I ask you a question? Can I go to, to the, to the uh, session where you told me that Bill Burr got booed and, and cooked the whole Philly? Can I pull that up right quick? Hell yeah. Hey, all right, let's, let's go to Bill Burr because Corey Holcomb put me on this game last night at the, at the 5150 show. Bill Burr is my favorite white comedian right now. My Did you first see one. You know what I was talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I seen it. That nigga, yeah. I, I seen the shit. Hold up. Let me. Oh shit. I don't I don't even damn man. Hold on. To tell people I, about it. I think I got it right here. Where is it at? Bill Burr. Hold on. That nigga cooked them. He cooked the whole Philly. Right. Fair use, fair use, y'all. Fair use. Yo, Bill Burr is the illest motherfucker in Nebraska. Be in word. <laughs> <laughs> Burr gets gets booed. Y'all hang with me. Boom, there we go. Gets booed in Philly. <clears throat> the, tech, the technician of this nigga, Lord have mercy. 
Go to the hotel. But you don't stop talking, do you? Like, ah, fuck it. I'll just come to this side for a while. Just. Don't, you know what's funny? I'm cooking my brain talking about nothing. I tell. I'm just walking around like, yeah, I just got a cheeseburger. Oh, fuck all you people. You know what, you fucking losers? I hope you all fucking die, and I hope the fucking Eagles never win the Super Bowl. Go fuck yourselves. Fuck all you motherfuckers, and fuck the Flyers. Fuck all of you. Fucking goddamn fucking losers. Who and Don Mayerera? Suck a dick. All of you. Suck a fucking dick. How's that? No, I'm segueing into my next joke. You can all lick my fucking red nuts, all of you. You can line up in your Harold Carmichael fucking jerseys, and one at a time, you can all suck my dick. City of brotherly love, you bunch of fucking cocks. Fucking goddamn losers, 52 fucking hours into a show. The fuck am I gonna do at this point? You people on a goddamn acid. <laughs> fucking be up here talking about Hitler, that ain't gonna work. What do you want me to talk about? Uh, hey, throw out some topics. Let's talk about heart disease, something you're all gonna fucking die of, and I'm gonna laugh at your fucking funerals. <laughs> it's gonna be great. You're all gonna get fucking cancer, which is fantastic, because all your fucking heads are shaved anyways. No one's even gonna notice. You're gonna get fired for coming to work too late, because they're not gonna notice that you have fucking bone marrow cancer, the only thing that's going to give it away is me laughing at you in the fucking background. You fucking bunch of losers with your fucking cell phone pictures. You fucking suck a dick. You fucking asshole. Eleven more minutes of this. I hope you all get in your Ford focuses. You fucking drive off the side of that faggot ass Ben Franklin bridge. You fucking one bridge having piece of shit city that no one gives a fuck about. The terrorists, the terrorists will never bomb you people because you're fucking worthless and no one cares about you. You are this high above New Orleans. No one gives a shit. FEMA would never show up for you fucking assholes. I hope your mother has herpes in the center of her asshole and you go home tonight, you lick it, you get it on your tongue and some other horrific shit happens that involves cancer. So all of you, 11 minutes left. 11 minutes. I hope somebody takes a fucking beer stein and just slaps you on the back of your zit infested fucking shoulders and your awful man tit tank tops. I hope that happens. I hope the glass fucking digs into your fucking shoulder blade, and then I see you afterwards. Hey, how's it going? Enjoy the fucking show. That's great. And I grabbed you by the fucking hair, but you don't have any. <laughs> you really have to come to this, people. You really have to come to it. I really hope all of you run into all those black people that you love so much here in Camden. I really hope that happens. I hope there's a line of all of you guys get fucking carjacked and they take out their big black dicks and they just shove them right in your fucking mouths, each and every one of you, and somehow they just keep repeatedly coming right in your fucking eyeballs. <laughs> Until it builds up so much that your eyes they fucking thrust over, you can't see shit, and somehow there's another dick in there for you to suck. Ten minutes left. <laughs> Hey, this is what you want. This is what you want. This is what you want. Fucking losers. Fucking Rocky is your hero. The whole pride of your city is built around a fucking guy who doesn't even exist. And fucking Joe Frazier is from there, but he's black, so you can't fucking deal with him. So you make a fucking statue for some three foot fucking Italian, you stupid Philly cheese eating fucking jackasses. I hope that cheese. All the way down till it wasn't no more time left, man. That shit Aye, man. Was good. That's an epic That's moment in comedy. Aye, he man. fucked them up. That nigga said, You got a three, three foot Italian Aye, <laughs> man. that don't exist. He cooked their ass, bro. That was dope. Oh my lord. That was dope, man. 
Hey man, he keep going too. That's the thing. He he do the he do all his time. He be like eight minutes left. No, we can keep it going. I just uh, I know you on here for a limited amount of time. You want to keep it good because you put me on to this. You want to keep it going? Oh man, but I'm glad you played that. A lot of people gonna watch it, man, because it's yeah. do that shit for a solid twelve minutes. He do it. He man. count that shit down. One minute left. Five <laughs> minutes left. Eight minutes left. 11 minutes left, and he cooked niggas the whole time. That was, we what I'm, was, what I'm saying is it's a lot of comics who ain't never really had an epic moment of originality, but they claim to be that nigga. No, nigga, where your ep where's your epic moment of originality? Show it to us. Hey, that, that, that was Bill Burr's epic moment of originality. He came off the head. He cooked, he cooked everything about Philly. He talked about the Liberty Bell. He, he, yo, if we keep going, he murdered him off the head. It wasn't written. <laughs> he was just going off the dome. He was murdering the motherfuckers. But that's how you do it, just off the rip. Nigga, you, you'll murder some shit, period. Hey, no, we can't let that go by, man. We need to ask comics when they claim to be somebody who is spectacular. Ask yeah. comics, where is your epic moment of original shit? <coughs> we want to watch your epic moment of original shit. Oh, I want to ask. I want to ask. Yeah. I want to. I also. I also want to ask is. Where is everybody's comedy shows? Because I came from the era of the Richard Pryor comedy shows, you know what I mean? The Red Fox, you know what I mean? The Eddie Murphy comedy shows, you know what I mean? And so on and so on. As of nowadays, the most nigga that's doing the most comedy shows is probably you and Kevin Hart and, 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 and fucking Cat Williams. It's y'all three. And Dave Chappelle, y'all four. Where's the other? All the other comedians that's supposed to like it was like, come on, my nigga, it's like over three hundred comedians. Where's this? Wanda Sykes? Wanda <laughs> got give it up for her, Simone. <clears throat> but where, where, where's everybody else at? It, it's a lot of comics. There's only a couple comedians. Hey man, if you ever see Lavelle Crawford in town, that's worth the ticket. Lavelle, that's my nigga too. I forgot Lavelle. That disrespectful. Me and my wife only go to Lavelle kind of niggas. We drive the Lavelle shit, period. That's our one of our favorite comedians. So Lavelle too. But besides yeah. that, who's wiggling like that? Hey man, look, man, I swear to God, I'm known for not even going inside the comedy club. I stand outside and holler at the bitches when they come out. I can't watch shit unless it's epic, nigga. D-Ray and, and Mike Epps. We got to add that to the, to the table, too. Yeah. They, get, they get down. D-Ray and Mike Epps, they still relevant. They do their motherfucking thing. Especially Mike Epps. But... Look at that nigga's face. <laughs> no, what? The light, it went out. It went out. Talk your shit, bro, man. Hey, talk your shit. My bad. My bad. What? Oh, something happened. Um, God pulled the shit out of himself. <laughs> Nigga, I ain't gonna have no friends in comedy because I'd rather tell... I actually like the feeling of when somebody is mad when I told the truth on them. That's, that's, that's a fetish I got. I like the way you look at me when I tell the truth about you. <laughs> Where is your epic moment of originality in comedy? Corey, what do you think your most your your epic moment was? Look, we it's a lot of shit, but it was one, it wasn't even a joke. When I had to look, when I had the homeboy, one of my white homies in um uh, in uh, Dallas, when I did the shack thing, uh -huh. them skip out there in the dress. And I nigga, why we have Lamar Odom come on out here like that? That's funny. 
And when I left the stage, man, it wasn't nothing left. It wasn't nothing left. I bet you, I bet you the comedians that went on after that won't say their name because they know wasn't nothing left when he did that. That's one why nothing. they had to make you the closer on the video, right? Yes. Wasn't nothing left. Show was done. Show was done. <laughs> You know, you know that's on Amazon Prime, right? That's the one. I, that's the one I watch the most. The one that's on Amazon Prime with you on it, nigga. And, and some you, of them niggas, some of them niggas, your name went on after me. One none oh. left. It was over. Oh, over, over. That was that was Stephen A. Smith. First time seeing me, he came backstage and we spoke. He was like, "What that one nigga? When he was done, the show was over." That's what Stephen <laughs> A. Smith said. Yeah. Yeah, that's a hell, that's an epic moment, man. <clears throat> Hold the on. Whole Dallas, the whole Dallas, the whole Dallas was at that show. My brother was at that show. I love my brother. Don't ever I make jokes about my brother, but he was at the show. Oh boy, who got swallowed? <laughs> <laughs> he was at the show. Uh Judge Mathis booed me at that show. Hating ass nigga. <laughs> because everybody was laughing and he was mad. Wow. You cook, you cook Judge Matthews. I didn't see him. They showed me. They was like, Corey, that one dude, he was booing. Because he was mad. Because I did, I did when I did the joke about uh ain't nothing scarier than uh precious a mosquito leaving Magic Johnson house. A mosquito leaving Magic Johnson house. Oh man. That nigga boo. <laughs> that's bad. Hey. Nigga, hey, it was that's, that's wild. Hold on, let me show the support. Corv, for coming on our show, man. We fuck with you. Hold on, show the screen real quick. Oh, let's, let's get this boy in the building. We fuck with you, Corv. <laughs> they gonna we, be right there. Thanks, Gooch. We got hey, we fuck with you, man, and we want to say thank you because you didn't have to do this, man, and you had yuck on the show, and uh, we appreciate you, my nigga, for real. That's what's up, man. I'm gonna go on here, go over, go wrong. <laughs> hey, what? Thanks for pulling up, my nigga. What'd you say? I go said, wrong. Let God be the condom. All right, man. Well, look, man, y'all do y'all thing, man. I'm gonna holler at y'all, man. You already know. Thanks, Corey. Much love. Fifty-one fifty is Corey Holcomb, everybody. Corey, motherfucking <laughs> Holcomb, pulled up on us, nigga. Let me get me out the middle. I don't know why I'm the middle, nigga. Shout out to Corey Holcomb, nigga, the real one, nigga. The real one, funky feel one, nigga. Fifty-one fifty, nigga. Fifty-one fifty nation, man. Shout out to Don, nigga. The, the one of the real kings of comedy, my nigga. Well, well they, don't hey, twin. they don't give Corey his love, but men lie, women lie, numbers don't numbers lie. don't. Corey got the hottest motherfucking comedian podcast in the game. By far. By far. None of them niggas, like whatever they do with their comic, whatever they shit, I ain't gonna even disrespect them. But whatever they got going on, it can't match one motherfucking show with Corey Holcomb. He goes once a week. They yeah. got it, all types of shit, all types of roasts, all types of other shit that just accumulate to one of his shows. Yeah. That's how powerful he is. Like, you got, yeah. like, some real <clears throat> legendary comedians doing motherfucking <clears throat> podcasts, and they ain't lit like Corey and Darlene. I'm sorry. I'm 14 sorry. years, man. 14 year anniversary coming up next week. I'm sorry, man. They, 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 they are the, the if you're gonna do the comedy like like the, the top comedy podcast, call mm -hmm. me first. Then Joe Rogan. Because Joe Rogan ain't a real comedian. That nigga wrestler or whatever he is. He, he like comedian. Yeah, he's he's good. Good. But Corey, Joe, and then after 85 that, South. 85 South, and then you know, after that. Yeah, whoever, whoever after that. It's whatever after that. Yeah. And then we'll take we'll take Joe out. Corey, 85 South, 
and then whatever is after that. Okay. Now, twin, I know you got to do your what the fuck weekly, <laughs> so you're gonna need a 20 minute break before you go into oh, that. You want it? Oh, I forgot about that, nigga. I so look, know. let's do this. Let, let's do this. Let's tap. I'm let's sure. let, let's I'm let's sure. sign out. I'm Give you a ten minute sign out because oh, you gonna go all the way? We got seven hundred people in the building. Okay, well, God damn it! Here we go. We've been on three hours. Let's keep it going. Breaking news, huh? Breaking news. If I do this breaking news on one of the twins, y'all need to tag Gilbert Arenas. I don't know if he awake right now. What time is it, man? He awake. If Gilbert, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the link out because I need Gilbert Arenas to tap in and, and really explain what happened when he went to the strip club in LA. He did some real dirtbag shit. And for him being one of the most paid NBA players in life, you should never be doing that. That's like Magic Johnson doing some shit like this. So I'ma get the screen. And I'ma um I put the link out. Everybody tag Gilbert Arenas, Gil's Arena. I want to see everybody tag him first before I go into the shit. I'm going to take the screen off. Whoever knows Gil's Arena shit, tag this nigga right now. Somebody tag Gil's Arena, no chill Gil. Tag this nigga in the chat right now, period. Tag this nigga. All right, let me, let me throw a tag. Is it at? Breaking news, breaking news. At no chill. Breaking news. Oh, Breaking news. No shit. Breaking news. Oh, what the fuck happened? All right, boom. Let me do it on a big boy. At no, no chill. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, Goose. Goose. Put that on the big screen. One more time, Junior. Why? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get you right. Let me get you right, man. Breaking news. Here we go. Oh, shit. Goose is Break your motherfucking news on motherfucking one the twins, man. Man, and I'm, I'm kind of disappointed with my guy. And I could see, not disappointed, but kind of puzzled. Let's say puzzled. Because if you're one of the most paid NBA athletes ever, you should not ever have to do what I'm going to say this man allegedly did. Because this, this is the word around L.A. You know, All right, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. He, he's from LA, so you get the word around. You get the word around the block. Gooch, have you ever heard about Sands? I'm just gonna say Sands. Yeah. Have you ever heard about Gilbert Arenas and Sands? I'm gonna say that. Uh, I didn't hear about him in, at Sands. What happened? Okay, boom. Hey, allegedly, this nigga spent two hundred and fifty thousand. And counterfeit money, allegedly. Wait, 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 wait. wait. It's Sam's. <laughs> the nigga Sam's ain't even there no more. <laughs> the Sam's ain't there no more, damn near, because of this nigga. I, I don't know, man. But that man allegedly spent 250 bands and counterfeit in Sam's. Wait, 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 wait. Nigga, that's a felony. No, it's not. It's fun bucks. He never bought no, he was in the strip club. That's fun bucks. If the strippers took it, they took it. <laughs> wait, wait, 250,000 in funny money? And fun and fun bucks. <laughs> Allegedly. This is a legend. This is a word around LA. I heard that shit last night. Like, nah, not not the guy. 
Allegedly. N nigga, man, the Secret Service would be at his house so fast. All right, he better not respond to this. Why did I even say that? Yeah, he better not respond to this. But uh, allegedly, that nigga went there with some, some fun bucks. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me. Alleg allegedly, it's, it's legend around LA. <laughs> I'm just letting you know, man. Sam's, nigga. The, hey, man. It's legend. I know exactly where Sam. They got some bad Latin bitches in there. Sa Sam's is closed down now. That shit is closed, so it's, it's not even there no more. So. Wait, hold on. But the, 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 rumor came, the rumor came from the club, it came from Sam's. <laughs> They, they put that out there. Like, nobody else put that out there but Sam, nigga, because they went through Hold it. Hold on, man. <laughs> Let me see. Hold on. Gilbert Arenas, 250000 in counterfeit. They said, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. No, nigga, that ain't going to be no news. Nigga, that's, that's some street oh, shit. Oh, that's underground. Yeah, that's street shit. How you going to pull that up like you could go? Like, go, like come on, nigga. Anyway, allegedly, this is alleged. This is alleged tale. I don't even know if a hater nigga told me this, but this is a legend in the streets of LA. You know, alleged. Damn. Hey, 250? Hey, bro, if it ever happened, allegedly, that's a nigga that's been. Everybody could get too deep into this LA shit. Sometimes you could be from LA. I tell my son all the time, nigga, you a valley nigga. You do not need to get into none of this LA shit. And he ain't got into some LA shit. Just right. around and trying to be cool. So sometimes you can get into some LA shit trying to be cool. You know what I mean? Like I said, like on Corey shit, when I said that my ex-wife had to hook up on tickets and shit. It wasn't my ex-wife doing it. It was her homegirls. She knew the, the crew, you know what I mean, that was doing the, the, you know, the wiggle. You know what I mean? So anybody that got some hookup, you know, come from some underground hookup. I ain't saying that Gilbert had, you know, but probably one of his homeboys or somebody, you know what I mean, came through there and they put, the, put it on him. You know what I mean? Because he was hanging out with the homeboy. Gilbert don't have to do that. Period. You know, so just saying that. My wife never had to do no tickets for no planes or nothing. My ex-wife. Her homegirls had to hook up. If you got to hook up to get something for cheap, you're going to get it for cheaper. So I was getting flights for cheap, nigga. The homegirl got the shit for cheap. Hey, fuck it. Let's do it. Yeah. So, yeah, it wasn't nothing like that. Like, my wife had a ring, nigga. Her homegirls had to hook up. We're going to go buy instead of buying at the ticket. We're going to go get it for half off at the homegirl. We good money. Yeah, so, the two hundred dollar round trip. Yeah, so it'd it be hookups and shit in the hood. So Gilbert probably, you know, was hanging out with some niggas that had to hook up in the hood. I don't see Gilbert going to grab that and taking it to the club. I, I blame it on his niggas. Whoever he was hanging out with that night, them niggas, <laughs> they they came in. <laughs> them niggas came in hot. <laughs> them niggas came in hot. Niggas. Period. Hey, Calico Network, what's up with you, nigga? Oh, uh, man, another day like the other day. Salute to Godzilla and the Unseen Bully. Man, what's going on? What up, man? what up, what up, what up? Hey, man, I think that <laughs> allegedly if that happened, that nigga struck a blow for Jordan Poole and every other nigga that tricked their money. <laughs> hey, that's allegedly. That's a, I think that was his crew. I, I, but it got, you get blamed on you. You're the big name. You come in with the crew full of niggas, and they get to spinning and winning. Hey, it's on you. <laughs> but let's be real. Gilbert Arenas don't got that nigga got millions, tens of millions of dollars. He don't need to yeah, do that shit like this. Let's yeah, I don't, I don't see that being a let's reality. Be I see that being his homeboys hanging out, and it got blamed on him. Yeah, yes. Somebody finna get put in timeout. <laughs> That's the damn <laughs> shot. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody but this old school, this should happen like a, over a decade ago. This ain't no like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, this ain't no breaking news. This old shit, like way back in the day. 
<laughs> allegedly, allegedly happened back in the day. Yeah. Sam's ain't even a club right now. That shit shut down. So it happened back in the day when Sam's was popping. Sam's ain't Sam's ain't even available right now no more. That ain't even the strip club in LA. When, oh, when did they shut Sam's down, man? Sam's has been shut down, nigga. That shit. Actually, I'm just I misunderstood you. I thought it was shut down as a result of. <laughs> Allegedly. I don't know. Allegedly. <laughs> I don't know. I probably, let me rephrase that. I thought, I, yeah, I said some extra shit. I don't know if it was shut down. Because of okay. that. it got shut down like after that. It was right. still open. That's what I meant. It was still open when that happened. And then it's not open no more. Basically, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah, lie me up and say that nigga got Sam shit down. Right, right. Hey, nigga, what you say that shit? Don't lie that nigga up and say the boy. <laughs> no, 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 Turbo. Yeah, I just heard some some wild shit went down with some fake money, and it could have been his niggas, man. It is what it is, man. You know, what I mean? oh, it ain't what it ain't. You know, niggas could be spreading rumors and hate. You never know if what a nigga said is real. You know, right. I heard, I just heard the wildest story. I'm like, man, I'm a nigga that go to Sam's religiously, man. I love Sam's. No Frank Ocean, man. Yeah, that's a That's one of the dopest strip clubs in LA. LA ever had in life, nigga. Sam's. Yeah. Period. You feel like you in Miami, Atlanta, all the top strip clubs, Houston. Nigga, you feel like you right there in L.A. That's the only yep. club that make you feel like that in L.A. Nigga, the last time I was at Sam's, nigga, Cardi B did her album released there. Well, yeah, that got to be something to so talk that, about. That, cause when what, you That's what type of motion Sam's had, nigga. Cardi B had her album release party at Sam's, nigga. That was yeah, you can, if you comparing that shit to uh, any any strip club down south. That got to be saying something because California strip clubs versus down it's south bunk. is boozy as shit. Bunk. It's bunk as shit. It's bunk as fuck, nigga. Go, until you go to Sam's. Right, right. Until you go to Sam's, nigga. Remember all them old school uh, uh, Brazilian porno movies? We, the big butt Brazilian porno mm -hmm. All Sam's. those bitches is right up in there. You think yeah. nigga, Cuban bitches, Dominican, Brazilian, it's the nigga, the whole map in that motherfucker, nigga. Yeah, United Nations in that map. motherfucker. <laughs> Along with the standard American bitches, like bitches fly from Miami, bitches fly from Atlanta, bitches coming right. from Vegas, the Bay Area, like everywhere, to, Detroit, everywhere to come to that motherfucker. So you got bitches coming from everywhere on the weekend to come pop up at that bitch. <laughs> So, right there on the lip it. On the lip it. Right downtown LA, nigga. So, right yeah. off the freeway. Yeah, that, that was our King of Diamonds, nigga. Facts. Okay, okay. The new one, the first one was stars. You had to go to like Gardena. You know yeah. What I mean? The first one was stars. You know what I mean? And, but the new shit was that one, my nigga. And yeah, nigga. Yeah. So Yeah, you wanna all, see the bad all, Latina bitches? Gotta go there, nigga. All the big players is in that motherfucker. So yeah, when I heard a, rumor, a lot of bitches there now. <laughs> when I heard a rumor that Gil, no chill, Gil came through that bitch with some counterfeit. Allegedly, his homeboy. I say his homeboy. Damn, his crew came through with some counterfeit. They put it on a no chill. Gil. It could be him. He got hella money. Like, why would he do that? Like, come on, man. So it, it had to be his crew. Stop hanging with them niggas, Gil. <laughs> it, 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 they just came through with a quarter million in counterfeit. Ever again. Ever, ever, ever. Ever, ever. Yeah. Hey, man, Um, I got to ask you, Um, Network, how you feel about the show tonight? Did you like it? Network. Uh, that, nigga, that nigga in the Matrix. But, uh, yeah. At the end of the day, I think it was a dope ass show. I think Corey Holcomb tapped in, you know what I mean? It, it really cleared up a lot of um um the, the politics that goes with the with the comedian side of the game because we know the music side of the game, me and you goose, but we don't know the 
comedian side of the game. So yeah, I'm going to really tap in and give that insight. You know what I mean? Like that was dope, man. So salute to Corey. Salute to the whole 5150, the whole nation. You know what I mean? And salute to everybody that came in and fucking with us tonight, man. Thank you. Salute to everybody right. around the world, little boys and girls that tapped in tonight. Dynamite, the chat been lit. We had like, nigga, over damn near about 800 people in the building at one time, my nigga. We was lit, man. Period. Oh, yeah. we, dumbass lit. we still lit. You know, so, um, bro, you. you everybody in here, send us a dollar a piece on Cash App. Just a dollar. Tap the app. Hey, but what, what's happening? Uh, Calico, man. We done talked about the whole Cat Williams shit. You know what I mean? Um, the whole um, comedy drama shit. You know what I mean? I said some shit about, you know, living color and, you know, <sighs> the whole shit. How you feel about the whole dialogue and what? what's your, how you want to land your plane on Frank Ocean, man? Because you just tapped in. Um. Well, I've been sitting back watching, man, and I learned a lot of shit that, um, like, I'm sure most people in the chat didn't know that goes on behind the scenes, like how, how tough motherfuckers is really getting nickel and dimed out there, man. And, um, whoo, man, when he told me about the wilding out dancers, I, I was like, whoa, god damn. <laughs> Hold on. What, I, I went to the bathroom. What did he say about the wilding out dancers, my nigga? He's making $25, $25 a show. show. You lying. Nope. Maybe they should have been at Sam's. <laughs> Hold on, man. It wasn't $25 an hour? $25, $25 an episode. Show. No, $25 an episode. A yes. Episode. Oh, my Lord. That's, yeah, that, why that. The bitch was, that's why the bitch was getting pregnant. They had to get something out of it. <laughs> DC oh Young Fly, DC Young Fly, you know what I mean? And, and, and everybody got a, a baby mom up out of that. <laughs> yeah, buddy. You let that bitch hand you a condom if you want to. She got a safety pin behind her back. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, it's going to be by choice of $25 oh, a epi. That's what, man, I, 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 I tapped out on that. $25 an episode, nigga. $25 an episode, man. That, man, it, it was a lot of shit. It was a lot of shit that I wasn't privy to behind the scenes Um, as far as, like, the, the glitz and glamour side of it goes. And all I'm saying, man, is if you want to go that route, just have your fucking paperwork and your shit in order, man. Yo, hold on. Uh, twenty five dollars, nigga. That ain't, you know, what a work day is. Like at least one hundred twenty dollars a day. That's what, what I'm day. saying. A bitch got twenty five dollars for that whole day. You know what? Like, let me let me let me go yeah. to like that bitch eighth money. <laughs> let me go. Let me go to a nigga that do rap videos. Not much a bitch cost for them for a day. <laughs> you got you paying like one fifty two hundred. And for the bad bitch, like from five hundred to a thousand dollars for the main bitch, for that same amount of hours. So what? Yeah. And that rap video was only five minutes, or four minutes, or three minutes. But these yep. motherfuckers are on a whole episode for thirty minutes. That's on MTV, on cable, and only get paid twenty five dollars. That's crazy. The game is fucked. I'm hitting bitches with the same twenty-five dollars right now. <laughs> Bitch, you know what Wild Now get? <laughs> twenty-five dollars. And bitch, you ain't even wilding out. <laughs> and you ain't even wilding out, man. You can't even get in my video, man. Like, that's the new price. I ain't paying mm -hmm. a bitch four, five hundred dollars to be in the video ever again. After I heard that, and they got twenty-five, and they got well, the baddest bitches on their show. They got well, some Mr. fat ass wilding out. They ain't got no fat baby mamas up there with stretch marks. They got all bad bitches. Marks. Yeah, they got model shit up there. But all bad bitches. Well, I'm gonna say this, Mister Mr. Holcomb. You've definitely gave the, re the women another reason to not like your ass. <laughs> nah, they need to not like themselves. They took that price, not Corey. Yep. Yeah. Well, I should say they ain't gonna—they ain't gonna like his commentary. They ain't gonna like the truth. I'll say that. 
Hey, the truth hurts, man. We in the uh, the, the age of the uh, the Aqu- what? What we in the age of the Aquarius? The age of the what? Mm-hmm. We're in the age of the truth. Period. Yeah. That's why all the truth is coming out. Let the chat. Somebody in the woke as fuck in the chat. Tell us what age we are. And we in some age right now to, where everybody is woke. <laughs> all the secrets are being revealed. That's what Cat Williams was saying. Yeah, I mean, the age of the sun. Where you woke at? We, gotta be, we, we at? gotta be at a crazy point in life to where, because when I was coming up, to be woke to something means that you was privy to it. You was sharp. You was gamed up. So how the fuck is that something to, to look down on? But right. the age of truth, enlightenment. Like y'all nigga, Aquarius is the water bearer. Who's the water bearer in, in the motherfucking signs? Uh, Aquarius, I believe, yeah. Aquarius, the water bearer. So we in the woke age, my nigga. Nigga said we in the age of game goofy. <laughs> Chat in the building, man. <laughs> the age of snitching. Yeah, we're in the, uh, they just said in the information age. The age of Aquarius, when, when everybody is supposed to be woke and that the, the veil is being revealed. You know what I mean? Like, we was blinded. Now we see shit. Now we ain't dumb. Now we ain't falling for the fucking banana and the tailpipe. Do y'all agree? Like, across well, the board. We're in the age of information. The age of but we've been in the age of information since computers came out. So why right now? Because they, they I think they got more updated and more like, I'm sure like, like you know, AI didn't come out yesterday. Computers didn't come out yesterday, but the motherfuckers ain't been around for 30, 40 years neither. I think the old way of hiding information behind doors and lock and key with with motherfuckers being so computer savvy and having ways to get around that, then they just say, fuck it. Well, we ain't going to put the truth behind a door no more. That's too easy to get into. What we'll do is we'll put the truth right in front of your face and surround it with a million motherfucking lies and watch you overload your circus trying to find out what's what. And another thing is, what you going to do about it? It's like, nigga, and what? It's like a nigga, and what? What you going to do? <laughs> what you gonna do? It's too many secrets coming about all them niggas. What you gonna do, bro? nigga? And what? That's what I take it as. It's like an and what, nigga? Yeah, nigga, we 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 hear all the UFO shit. Now we want to have motherfucking government meetings about UFOs and what? Yeah, we we kept that shit a secret. Now we want to tell the government what we found and what? Like, yeah. like they they doing that shit, boy. They could just do they one two and say fuck us, bro. So I know, I know, whatever happened, I when niggas was about to be voted in, I just say that. Whatever happened, when niggas was about to be voted in, they stood up, my nigga. Period. Well, yeah, I mean, you gonna have the world. I mean, at the end of the day, they they gonna keep on doing that shit until niggas stand up. Period. All them other little bullshit ass rainbow movements, niggas stood up. That's all I'm gonna say. Bro, say you had that. the you had the leader of the country talking about walking up grabbing bitches in the pussy. <laughs> hey, talk Thanks, about hey. That nigga I'll said, "I will blow a nigga brains out on Fifth Avenue and won't nothing happen. The people will still love me." Hey, I would rather have hey. him. Than what we got right now. Hell yeah. We got a nigga that's gonna fall asleep when it's time to hit a nuclear bomb. He's my best at home, Joe. That seemed like he was off. Uh, what that shit called? The shit that they be Avalon. What that shit called when they be up all night? Adderall. 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 We got a nigga that look like he been off Adderall the whole time he was in his presidency. We got new news coming out on this nigga on the hour every hour. Like for eight years, like four years straight. Like when did we not wake up to Trump being on our television, on our IG, on our goddamn motherfucking YouTube? This nigga, boom, Trump has a new message. Trump has it every fucking day. Right? Mm -hmm. Now look at this new nigga we got. This nigga. Come and listen, Joe. Yeah, shit burning up. This nigga going to different vacation homes and laying out in tents. <laughs> like, what the what we got? 
It's a total different. I want a nigga that's gonna go to China and tell Kim John on nigga, like, hey boy, I press that button on your ass, boy. You better not try it. And they cool, like they shook hands and shit. They knew this nigga was about business. He was a cocky billionaire that didn't give a fuck about what they was doing. Nigga, I got money too. I'm not no motherfucking president that's getting three hundred thousand a year. I'm a I don't give a fuck about the presidential rule. Yo, fuck you, nigga. The, the queen, he didn't give a fuck about the queen. Rest in peace to the queen. He walked all in front of her. He did that shoulder. Lower the door <laughs> tight. He didn't give a fuck about the queen, period. That's what type of nigga we need to be running the United States. I'm sorry. The United States is soft right now. Our army is soft. Everybody is soft. We got nigga. We need a nigga in that bitch running shit and ready to push. Well, I know they ain't gonna look at America tough if if they ever the president just better not get back on the bike no more. <laughs> hey, it's a wrap. But um, speaking of that, it's a wrap for the night, nigga. We've been here for three and a half hours, nigga. We out this bitch, man. No, 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 no. Uh. Uh-uh. uh Bro, we in three and a half hours, nigga. We've been debating. Let's deactivate. deactivate. Put the drinks up, nigga. Yada da. Boom. Deactivate. Everybody deactivate. Nigga, I ain't got no drink in my shit. Hold on. I gotta do a reactivate. Hold up. Uh, dang. <laughs> I had an empty cup. My bag, nigga. We've been dialoguing, nigga. I've been sipping and dipping. But uh boom. I'm re I'm reactivated. Uh mini Don Julio, personal bottle. Ah 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 bah, bah, bah. Let's do it again. Ah, ah. Deactivate. Bye, bye, bye. Love you, sis. Latrice, love you. I'll see you in the morning. Everybody in the motherfucking building, it's been a wonderful night, man. Deuces to everybody, man. Let me say something to my twin. Calico, thanks for tapping in. Yeah, that twin, man. Great night, Dynamite, man. Salute to Corey Holcomb, nigga, for tapping in. You feel me? Salute yeah. to Cat Williams for talking this shit, man. Salute to Club Shay Shay, man. We had a lot of dialogue, fair use. Fair use, you know what I mean? Like a motherfucker. We we use a lot of footage tonight. No yeah, problem. man. But look. Hey, happy new year to everybody. We love y'all. We see y'all next week. We out. Hey, yo, yo, Peace. yo. We out, baby. Got on that boy. Peace. Hey, Gooch. Anyway, boom. Goose the Great. Hit him on his cash app. That was his cash app at the bottom of the screen. Hit me on my cash app at the bottom of the screen. Hit Corey Holcomb. Hit everybody. Like, support the system. We ain't here trying to run it up, nigga, all that extra shit, but we for the free 99, nigga. For the free 99 records, we ain't monetized, nigga. So if you appreciate, nigga, it's so smoke. Look at the room. I just smoked my whole room out, nigga. Y'all can't even see me, nigga. But anyway, support the system, nigga, and we gonna keep supporting y'all, nigga, period. So get a cash app, nigga, a dollar, something, anything. I don't know what it is, but I got money. Goose got money. Everybody got money, but everybody that y'all give super chats who got money all the niggas that y'all do super everybody got money so don't act like oh y'all got money oh goose got money so they don't need no support we all need support teamwork make the motherfucking dream work period so salute the guests salute the host salute to us bring y'all dope content my nigga period for the free 99 we ain't monetized you ain't seen no motherfucking commercial salute to that because you gotta pay a subscription to not have commercials on your shit we ain't got no commercials. We giving y'all raw, uncut, good content, nigga. And we back tomorrow, nigga, with Smoke A Lot Radio, Yuck Mouth TV. And we probably back again, nigga, this weekend with the Wonder Twins or What The Fuck Weekly. So we do this shit for you. I don't have to do none of this shit. Goose don't have to do none of this shit. Corey Holcomb didn't have to tap in. We don't have to do none of this shit. It's all for the free 99 for y'all, man. So support us and we gonna support y'all, man. And if you can't make no cash deposit, no support, hit the motherfucking likes, hit them subscribes, you know what I mean? Share all that shit, man. And fuck with us, man. Get the movement going, man. Like, we be very motherfucking humble. You know what I mean? But I'm going to kick my shit. This year, we need y'all support. We need to level the fuck up, man. We need likes. We need subscribes. We need motherfucking cash apps, all that shit. We ain't got a super chat. Our super chat is cash app. Y'all want to super chat us? Hit the motherfucking cash app, just like y'all do everybody else's shit. On some real shit, we give y'all good content. We give y'all the best motherfuckers in the game on our shit. And yo, man, salute us, man. Like, stop playing, my nigga. You know, I'm on an academic rank. 
Yeah, it's big motherfucking Wonder Twins. We big Wonder Twins, bro. We done had some of y'all biggest comedians, some of y'all biggest rappers on this shit. Same as Smoke A Lot Radio. Like, stop playing with us, my nigga. I don't know what problem you got with me. I don't know what problem you got with... We got to level this shit up, my nigga. Like, let's get beyond the problems. Let's get beyond the bullshit, my nigga. I don't know who you thought I had beef with, but everybody you thought I had beef with, I'm cool with, my nigga. I ain't got no beef no more. So when you got to choose sides and say, hey, I'm with this nigga, no, you ain't got to do that no more. <clears throat> what are we doing? The hottest shit out here, bro. Period. Stop playing with us, my nigga. Fuck with us, bro. Fuck with us, bro. On some real shit. Fuck with us a long way. Are we going to shut this shit down? We don't even have to do this shit no more. Period. So fuck with us a long way. I'm going to talk my shit. Fuck with us a long way. Because y'all give the other niggas, the, the culture vultures, all the love. And niggas be wondering, like, why? Why, 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 why? Why you got to be a, a motherfucking white boy to get all the love? Like, come on, let's. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I'm gonna blame y'all. Why niggas gotta be white for everything to be cool? Like the white boy could do everything, cross niggas up and beefs and, and, and all types of gangbang shit. We give you good content, and motherfuckers want to act cocky like we ain't that. But you go to the white boys, and I, man, I love white people. No Frank Ocean. My family half white. So I ain't got nothing against them. But as far as the content creators, I'd rather go to the white content creators than y'all black content creators. That's y'all, nigga. I'm talking about y'all, nigga. So when I ask y'all to support, nigga, because y'all support the white boy. Big time. As soon as the white boy go up, y'all, uh, Come on, my nigga. Teamwork make the dream work. That's why black content creators ain't really winning. It's only one, of, it's only like two or three or four. That's winning. Other than that, all white content creators. You know why? Because white people support all they shit. Period. And it ain't no race shit. I'm just saying. It's like white is right. And the black is whack. It's like a black cat. Black cat is bad luck. Who told you that? I see hella black cats in the alley. I ain't never had no bad luck. Who told you that? So it's like you feel safer. Like I told one of my niggas like, how can this white podcast nigga ask you the same questions that I can't ask you? Like, if I ask you that, it's beef. Like, we about to fight. But if this white podcaster asks you that, you're going to reveal your whole soul. Like, this shit is wild, my nigga. So we need to even the field with our black podcasters. I, ain't, I don't give a fuck about the money. I got money. But just even it out, man, with the content. Don't come, like, black podcasters can't ask the questions that a white podcaster or I ain't going to say white, a culture vulture. You know what I mean? Because there's multiple races doing this shit, not just white. So a culture vulture could ask. Like, they could go deep into your criminal history. Like, a nigga try to do that on a black podcast. Like, nigga, you a rat. You a snitch. Like, oh, it's beef. Nigga, what you asking them questions for? Nigga, ah. But let an opposite race ask you that same question. You want to act like you on nigga 60 minutes. Hey man, well, first time I was up, I was in a trap. First time I hopped off the porch, the big OG, big homie, big old dog, man. Old dog had all the work. He gave me the work, nigga. He gave me the gun. And he told me to put me on. I gotta shoot a nigga. You know, the first thing I shot was in front of the liquor store. OG dog put me on. Like they tell their whole story. You ask the same shit at a black podcast and they Fuck, nigga. I ain't snitching around this motherfucker, nigga. Who you think you talking to, nigga? We ain't doing that, nigga. Matter of fact, nigga, you know, it'd, be, it'd get ugly in this motherfucker. Keep asking questions, bro. So it get like that on my podcast or, or another. Like, come on, man. We got to stop the bullshit, man. Let's support each other, man. Let's level this shit up, man. All we got is us, man. All we got is y'all, my nigga, the supporters. Y'all subscribers, bro. All we got is y'all. And you got real nigga shit on this shit, bro. And niggas is support. Support who you want to support. But you got real nigga shit on here. Let's support the nerds that got money. Go ahead, do your thing. But them nerd niggas are getting ran through with bitches that's taking 500 thou wow from like, the fuck is going on out here? I done got robbed, but not for no fucking 500 thou wow from a bitch. That never happened. Sorry about that.
and then keep the bitch. And y'all support this thing. Y'all, boom, thousands, hundreds of thousands of niggas watching this shit. It's like the real niggas is out of style and the fake niggas is in style. I'm going to end it on that. Y'all fuck with the real or y'all fuck with the fake. Period. And we're going to end it on that. I love y'all. Happy New Year, nigga. One of the twins deactivated. Yada. Yeah,